Recently, I've been playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, based on the novel by Douglas Adams. The events of the game loosely mirror that of the events of the main story in the radio series and book. The, the game starts with Arthur Dent in his house shortly before the demolition of his house and by extension Earth. After the destruction of Earth, Arthur and Ford hitchhike onto the Vogon ship. Don't panic! Relax, because everything you need to know about playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is contained in the pages of this manual. In this story, you will be Arthur Dent, a rather ordinary Earth creature who gets swept up in a whirlwind of interstellar adventures, almost beyond comprehension. As the story begins, bulldozers are waiting to reduce your house to rubble to make way for a motorway bypass. Will you attempt to deal with this problem? Your rather strange friend Ford Prefect drops by to tell you that the Earth is about to be demolished to make way for an interstellar bypass. If you survive this double threat, you'll embark on a series of intergalactic misadventures even funnier than your worst nightmares. This is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis and today is Tuesday the 19th of January 2021 and it's time for another text adventure game. We will be playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams and Steve Meretzky. Science fiction forward slash humor forward slash literary. 1984. It's a text adventure game based on the classic, uh, extremely satirical science fiction that I grew up with as a kid. I hope you will join me when we start this game. We may not be able to finish it one play, but I'm, I can guarantee you will enjoy it. Back, relax, get your favorite cup of tea, and we're going to begin the adventure in just a few minutes. We're playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And the game, uh, of course, is <clears throat> was also, also by Steve Maretsky. So we're starting the game uh, on the first page. Uh, we're using Windows Frots to play the game. Uh, the, by the way, the uh, download, the free download you can get is https colon forward slash forward slash ifdb dot tads dot org. Um, and just search for the game on that website. You'll find it there. So here we go. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Infocom Interactive Fiction, <clears throat> a science fiction story, copyright 1984 by Infocom Incorporated, all rights reserved, release 59, forward slash serial number 851108. You wake up. The room is spinning very gently around your head, or at least it would be if you could see it which you can't. It is pitch black. All right, let's see, uh, touch. What do you want to touch? Touch floor. It's too dark to see. Touch wall. Fiddling with the wall has no desirable effect. Look, it is pitch black. Stand up. Very difficult, but you manage it. The room is still spinning. It dips and sways a little. Oh my gosh. Where the heck am I? Look. It's pitch black. East. You can't go that way. Move. What do you want to move? West. You can't go that way. Uh, south. You miss the doorway by a good 18 inches. The wall jostles you rather rudely. Touch doorway. I don't know the word doorway. Touch wall. Fiddling with the wall has no desirable effect. Door. There's no verb in that sentence. Touch door. 
Fiddling with the door accomplishes nothing. Open door. It's already open. Walk through door. Did you have did, did you have any particular direction in mind? Uh, what what direction did I go originally? Move south. Use the word south in a way that I don't understand. South. You missed the doorway by a good 18 inches. The wall jostles you rather rudely. Move 18 inches. Move left. Touch door. So the door has no desired effect. Southwest. Can't go that way. South east. Can't go that way. North west. Can't go that way. North east. Uh, move south. Move. Move. What do you want to move? Um, south. Miss the doorway by a good 18 inches. The walls tosses you rather rudely. Look, feel, what do you want to feel? Wall. Oh, finally, uh, suddenly a bulldozer pokes through, the, through, the, through your wall. However, you have no time for surprise because the ceiling is collapsing on you as your home is unexpectedly demolished to make way for a new bypass. You are seriously injured in the process, but on your way to the hospital, a fleet of Vogon constructor ships unexpectedly arrives and demolishes the earth to make way for a new hyperspace bypass. Next time, try turning on the light. We're about to give you your score. Put on your peril sensitive sunglasses now. Hit return or enter when ready. Your score is zero <laughs> of a possible 419 turns. Would you like to start over, restore a save position, or end the session of the game? Press, uh, I'm going to type restart. You wake up, the room is spinning very gently around your head, or at least it would be if you could see You could see it if, if you can't. Okay, so we're going to save our game. Save the game as H A G H H G G, and we'll put the date 2021-1-19. We're gonna save that game. Okay. Turn on the light. Light switch. It's too dark to see. Feel light switch. I said this is one I can. I'm just sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um, stand up. Very difficult to be managed. The room is still spinning. It dips and sways a little. Uh, touch light. Touch a light. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. I think we did it. Good start to the day. Pity it's going to be the worst one of your life. The light is on is now on. The bedroom is a mess. It is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and old wallpaper. There is a wash basin. A chair with a tatty dressing gown slung over it and a window with the curtains drawn. Near the exit leading south is a phone. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. A wash basin, a chair with Teddy gown. Take gown. Luckily, this is large enough for you to get hold of. You notice something in the pocket. Open pocket. It's hard to open the cl or close the pocket unless you're wearing the gown. Wear the gown. You are now wearing the gown. Hand in pocket. 
pocket. Right, we'll save our game in case we die. Um, open pocket. Opening your gown reveals a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. It, a buffered analgesic a, and po po pocket fluff. All right. Um, open curtains. As you part your curtains, you see that it's bright morning. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the meadows are blooming, and a large yellow bulldozer is advancing on your home. Oh my god. Ah, uh, there's the exit. Uh, t take screwdriver. It dances by you like a thing possessed. Take toothbrush. You lunge for it, but the room spins nauseatingly away. The floor gives you a light tap on the forehead. Toothbrush. Take toothbrush. It slips through your fumbling fingers and hits the carpet with a nerve shattering bang. Take screwdriver. You certainly pick you're certainly picking the tough task. The floor acts like a trampoline on an ice rink or something that they've been working on for years at Disneyland. South. You miss the door by a good 18 inches. The wall jostles you rather rudely. Open door. It's already open. Exit. You miss the door by a good inches. Oh my god. Walk through door. Do you have a particular direction in mind? South. South, um, how about east? West, north. Um, leave house. Okay, did you have any particular direction? I was telling me a bulldozer pokes through your wall. However, you have no time for surprise because the ceiling is collapsing on you as your home is unexpectedly demolished to make way for a new bypass. You are seriously injured in the process, but on your way to the hospital, a fleet of Vogon constructor ships. Unexpectedly arrives and demolishes the earth. Makes way to your bypass. Better luck next time. Lex life. You are going. But we're about to give you a score. Put on your peril sensitive glasses. Um, okay. How was the score this time? Zero out of four hundred in nineteen terms. Restore, please. I'm gonna restore our game. All right. Uh, look. Bedroom. The bedroom is a mess. It is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and old wallpaper. There is a wash basin, a chair, and a window with the curtains drawn. Near the exit, leading south, is a phone. There is a flathead screwdriver here. Okay, um, use the phone. Um, open curtains. As you part your curtains, you see that it's a bright morning. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the meadows are blooming. And a large yellow bulldozer is advancing on your home. All right. Uh, take toothbrush. It says you want things possessed. Take flat. Take screwdriver. You're certainly picking up the tough tasks. The floor acts like a trampoline on an ice rink or something like they've been working on for years at Disneyland. Uh, Use phone. Take phone. Dances you. Um, go exit south. South. Miss the doorway by a good 18 inches. Open pocket. Opening your gown reveals the th a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is a, a buffered analgesic and pocket fluff. Ah. Look at doorway. Look at exit. Use the word exit that I don't understand. Look. 
The bedroom is a mess. It is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and old wallpaper. There is a wash basin. Uh, a chair. Exit window. You missed the doorway by a good 18 inches. The wall. Look at window. As you part your curtains, you see that it's bright morning. The sun is shining. Uh, open window. Um, exit. It's a doorway by a good 18 inches. The wall jostles you rather rudely. Take basin. Take wash basin. It's not important. Leave it alone. Look. Um, grab. What do you want to grab? Grab screwdriver. You're, okay. Um, yell. Ah, oh, doggone it. It didn't work. Um, just, you're about, I got zero out of four, 400 terms. I died again. So let's load the game. Restore. All right, let's open the game. Crawl. How about crawl? Will that work? Uh, you can't, at least not in the game. In this game, you can't. Uh, floor. Look at carpet. It's not important, leave it alone. Look at room. The bedroom is a mess. It is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and old wallpaper. There is a wash basin, a chair, and a window with the curtains drawn. Near the exit leading south is a phone. Grab phone. It slips through your fumbling fingers and hits the carpet with a nerve-shattering ban. Pick up phone. It dances by you like a thing possessed. How do we leave? Exit! Miss the door by a good 18 inches. The wall jostles you rather rudely. Help! Uh, if you're really stuck, a complete map and invisic clues hint booklet are available from your dealer. Or via mail order with the form that came in your package. Okay. Um, southeast. Leave exit. Okay, save a game. In case something happens. Okay, look. Better was a mess. Grab toothbrush. It slips through your fumbling fingers. Um, take toothbrush. bedroom. You missed the door by a good 18 inches. How am I supposed to get out of here? chair. That's not important. Leave it alone. Open curtains. As you part your curtains, you see that it's a bright morning. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. The meadows are blooming. And a large yellow bulldozer advancing on your home. Yell at bulldozer. Suddenly the bulldozer pokes
through your wall. However, you have no time for surprise because the ceiling is collapsing on you as your home is unexpectedly demolished. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? solution here. I think I have a solution here. Uh, big, uh, big shout out to IGN for the walkthrough. Uh, I missed a few steps, so I know what to do. I think I know what to do this time. We want to restart. No, restore. Uh, restore. Right, load the game. All right. Open pocket. Big gun reveals the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. A buffered analgesic. So let's take analgesic. You swallow the tablet. After a few seconds, the room begins to calm down and behave in an orderly manner. Your terrible headache goes. Oh, that's what the problem was. There was no, there was no problem with the actual. Um, the 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 tractor was not uh, damaging my room yet. It was just my headache. All right, take screwdriver. Taken. Take toothbrush. As you pick up your toothbrush, a tree outside the window collapses. There is no casual relationship between these two events. Okay, that's we're getting close. All right. Um, um, pick up phone. You pick up the receiver. A moment later, the dialing tone is suddenly cut off. Glancing through the window, you can't help but notice the large oak tree of which you are particularly fond crashing down through the phone cable. Should you, shouldn't you be taking more interest in events in the world around you? Well, you've got it. Exit. This is the enclosed front porch of your home. Your front garden lies to the south, and you can re-enter your home to the north. On the doormat is a pile of junk mail. Take junk mail. You gather up the pile of, tr of, of mail. Uh, look at uh, tractor. Look. Stanley, uh, and this is the enclosed front porch of your house. Uh, 
Oh, I'm still in the house. I'm seriously injured. Uh, return. What do, what do I got here? I got 10 out of possible 400. So let's restore the game. Okay. Open. Okay. Take. Pill. Take. Oh, oh, open. Pocket. Open your gown reveals a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. A buffered analgesic. A pocket fluff. Take. Anal. Gizik. You saw the tablet. After a few seconds, the room begins to calm down and behave in an overly ma orderly manner. Your terrible headache goes. Save the game. All right. Good. We're making progress. Now what we're going to need to do is take toothbrush. As you pick up your toothbrush, a tree outside the window collapses. There is no casual relationship between these two events. Take a screwdriver, taken. Take phone. You pick up the receiver a moment later, the dialing tone is suddenly cut off. Glancing through the window, you can't help but notice the large old, old oak tree of which you are particularly fond of um, upon crashing down through the phone cable. Should you be taking more interest in events in the world around you? Well, you've got it. Uh, exit. This is the enclosed front porch of your home. Your front garden lies to the south and you can re-enter your home to the north. On the doormat is a pile of junk mail. Take junk mail. You gather the big pile of mail. Um, let's go south. All right, front porch. This is the enclosed front part of the porch. So we just exited after taking the junk mail. South, front of how home. You can enter your home to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest. And a country lane is visible to the south. All that lies between your home and the huge yellow bulldozer bearing down on it is a few yards of mud. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. He starts looking, start, he looks startled to see you emerge and yells at you to get out of the way. The bulldozer rumbles slowly toward your home. Let's save the game. Walk through mud. You hit your head against the ground as you attempt this feat. The bulldozer rumbles slowly toward your home. Bulldozer. There's no ver. Okay. Walk. You can walk into your home to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest. And a country lane is visible to the south. What lies between your home and a huge yellow bulldozer bearing down is a few yards of mud. Let's go um, northeast. Back of, back of house. The rear garden is a pleasant place. It's a bright morning. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. The meadows are blooming. And it's a lovely day for a walk. A path leads around the house to the southeast and southwest. Southeast. Southeast. Front of house. Mr. Prosser, the low... Prosser, the local council, is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. The bulldozer rumbles slowly toward your home. Speak. You must address Mr. Pro Prosser directly. The bulldozer piles into the side of your home. Your home collapses in a cloud of dust and a stray flying brick hits you squarely on the back of the head. You try to think of some, some suitable last words, but what with the confusion of the moment, and the spinning of your head, you are unable to compose anything pithy and expire in silence. That really sucked. Uh, look. You, you keep out of this. You're dead. An ambulance arrives. Look. You keep out of this. You're dead and should be concentrating on developing a good, firm rigor mortis. You are put in the ambulance which drives away. 
speak. For a dead person, you are talking too much. As the ambulance reaches the mort mortuary, a fleet of Vogan constructor ships unexpectedly arise and demolishes the earth to make way for a new upper space bypass. We are about to give you your score. Put on the peril sen sensitive sunglasses now. Uh, hit enter when ready. 10 at a possible 400. Restore, please. Restore the game. All right, would you like to start over? Yes, okay. Um, southwest. So, toward your home. Speak to Mr. Proser. Hmm, Mr. Proser looks at you expectantly as if seeming, as if you seem to be about to talk. Talk to Mr. Proser. Stop! What do you want to stop? Bulldozer. You lie down in the path of the advancing bulldozer. Proser yells at you to, for Christ's sake, move. Say no. You're, you're, take, you're talking complete nonsense. Pull yourself together. The bulldozer thunders toward you. The ground is shaking beneath you as you lie in the mud. No. You sound rather negative. The noise of the giant bulldozer is now so violently loud that you can't even hear Prosser yelling to warn you that you will be killed if you don't get the hell out of the way. You just you just see him just gesticulating widely, wildly. No. You sound rather negative. With a terrible grinding of gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes shudders and emits a noxious substances emits noxious substances all over your rose bed Prosser is incoherent with rage moments later your friend Ford prefect arrives he hardly seems to notice your predicament but keeps glancing nervously at the sky he says hello Arthur takes a towel from his battered leather satchel and offers it to you take towel as you take it, Ford says, er, look, thanks for lending me the towel. But nice, be nice knowing you, got to go now. He smiles oddly and walks down the country lane. Uh, talk to Ford. You can't see Ford here. Speak to Ford. Okay. Um, county Lane. Country Lane. Move. Country. Lane. Follow. What do you want? What do you want to follow, Ford? You can't do that while you're lying down. Stand up. The bulldozer drive driver gives you a quick chew on his gu of his gum and slams in the clutch. The bulldozer pl piles into the side of your home. Your home collapses in a cloud of dust and a strafe flying brick hits you squarely on the back of the head. You try to think of some suitable last words. Uh, you're unable to compose anything pithy and expiring. So okay. Exit. Uh, look. Speak. So I've, I'm already dead. I've been taken to the uh, mortuary. Let's uh, let's restore the game. All right. All right. Look. You can enter the home to the north. A path leads south to northwest, east to northwest, and a country lane is visible to the south. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Stop. Bulldozer. You lie down on the path of the advancing bulldozer. Prosser yells at you. For, the, for, the, for Christ's sake, move. 
No. You sound rather negative. The bulldozer thunders toward you. The ground is shaking beneath you as you lie in the mud. Save the game. Okay, say no. Uh, the noise of the giant bulldozer is now so violently loud that you can't even hear. Pros are yelling to warn you that you will be killed if you don't get the hell out of the way. You just see him gesticulating wildly. No. You sound rather negative. With a terrible grinding of gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits noxious substances over your rose bed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, your friend for Prefect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. He says, Hello, Arthur. Takes a towel from his battered uh, leather satchel and offers it to you. Say hello. These, um, speak to Ford. Hmm, Ford Prefect looks at you expectantly as if you seem to be about to talk. Help, for help. If you really stuck a complete map, okay. Um, take towel. As you take it for it says, er, look, thanks for lending me the towel, but been nice knowing you. Got to go now. He smiles oddly and walks down the country lane. Stop Ford. You can't see Ford here. All right, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, speak to Mr. Prosser. Mr. Prosser looks at you expectantly as if you seem to be about to talk. Stop. What do you want to stop? Uh, bulldozer. You already are. Okay, what do I do now? Look. Front of house lying down. You can enter your home to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest, and a country lane is visible to the south. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Uh, okay. Look at towel. It's covered with little pink and blue flowers. Uh, look at digital watch. You see nothing special about the digital watch. Look. You can enter your home to north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest. Again, a country lane is visible to the south. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. What do we do next? something I I missed something let's look the game let's see, open we left off look you can, you can. Local, standing on the other side of the bulldozer he seems to be wearing a digital watch the noise of a giant bulldozer is now so violently loud you can't even hear Prosser yelling to warn you that you'll be cured if you don't killed if you don't get the hell out of the way you just um, you just see him just leaning widely. Okay. okay, um, no. You sound rather negative. With a terrible grinding of the gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits noxious substances all over your rose bed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, your friend Ford Prefect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. He says, Hello, Arthur. Takes a towel from his battered leather satchel and offers it to you. Ford, what about my house? It's not a house, it's a home. Footnote 2.
Ford glances uncomfortably at the sky. He offers you the towel again. Ford, what about my home? Ford looks startled, then guilty. He starts to say something and stops. He starts to say something else and stops. Suddenly, he seems to see the bulldozer for the first time and start, stops starting to, to say things and starts. He seems to come to a momentous decision. Says he has something of, of earth-shattering importance to tell you and stresses the importance of a quick drink at the horse and groom. Pointing toward Prosser, he exclaimed, but that man wants to knock my house down. Ford goes off for a quiet word with Prosser. From where you're lying, you cannot hear what's happening, although they seem deeply engrossed in conversation. Speak to Ford. Ford Prefect looks at you expectantly as if you were about to talk. Speak. Okay. Let's see what I should do. Stand up. Your your home collapse is a I died again. A straight brick fly. Okay. I should have just stayed lying down. Let's look at the game. Restore. 10 out of 427 times. Okay. Look. No. With a terrible grinding of gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits noxious substances all over your rose bed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, friend Ford Prefect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. He says, hello, Arthur, takes a towel from his battered leather satchel and offers it to you. All right, we're gonna save their game after we do this. Uh, Ford, what about my home? Ford looks startled, then guilty. He starts to say something and stops. He starts to say something else and stops. Suddenly he seems to see the bulldozer for the first time. Stops starting to say things and starts. He seems to come to a momentous decision. He says he has something of earth shattering importance to tell you and stresses the importance of a quick drink at the horse in that room. Pointing toward Prosser, you explain, but that man wants to knock my house down. Ford goes off for a quiet word with Prosser. From where you're lying, you cannot hear what's happening, although they seem deeply engrossed in, in conversation. All right, we'll save our game as uh, add a new save, save point called home or house or Arthur's house. Okay, look, front of house lying down. You can enter your home to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest, and a country lane is visible to the south. I am not getting up from that, tr that uh, bulldozer until someone stops that bulldozer permanently. Ford Prefect is here. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Ford and Prosser stop talking and approach you. Ford says that Prosser has agreed to lie in your place so that the two of you can go off to the pub. Reluctantly, Prosser steps forward and lies down in front of the bulldozer. You stand up. Go to pub? <laughs> Did you have any particular direction in mind? Ford. Ford. 
let's go to pub to the pub Ford go to the pub Ford busy scanning the sky for something ignores you look at sky you see nothing special about the sky Ford urging you to follow hurries toward the country lane go move where do you want to move country country lane country lane oh the uh. the country lane is visible to the south go south the country lane the road runs from your home to the north toward the village pub to the west ford prefect is here come along arthur says ford impatiently and enters the pub enter pub pub the pub is pleasant and cheerful and full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they've got about 12 minutes to live and are therefore having a spot of lunch some music is playing on the an old jukebox the exit exit is east Ford prefect is here there is a barman sitter serving at the bar behind the bar is a shelf it is full of the sorts of items you find on shelves behind bars and pubs. Ford buys lots of beer and offers half to you. Muscle relaxant, he says impenetrably. Save the game as pub. Muscle relaxant. Good old beer. That beer does that to you. Uh, drink beer. It's a very good beer, brewed by a small local company. You particularly like its flavor, which is why you woke up feeling so wretched this morning. You were at somebody's birthday party here in the pub last night. You begin to relax and enjoy yourself. So when Ford mentions that he's from a small planet in the vicinity of Betelgeuse, Betelgeuse not from Guildford as he usually claims, you take it in your stride and say, oh yes, which part? Ford. Which part? Speak to Ford. Okay, let's look. The pub is pleasant and cheerful. Lots of pleasant people. There's lots of be beer standing here. There's a barman sitting at the bar. Drink the beer, urges Ford. It will help cushion your system against the coming shock of the matter transference beer beam drink beer it is really it is really very pleasant stuff with a very good dry nutty flavor some light froth on top and a deep color it is as exactly room temp it is exactly room temperature you reflect upon that you reflect that the world cannot be all bad when there are such pleasures in it Ford mentions that the world is going to end in about 12 minutes okay um, save as pub okay look Pub is pleasant and cheerful, full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they're about to. They've got 12 minutes to live. Uh, Ford Prefect is here. There's lots of beer here. There's a barman standing in the bar. Drink the beer, urges Ford. Drink the beer. Drink the beer. There's a distinct crash, which Ford explains is nothing to worry about. Probably just your house being knocked down. Look. Behind the bar is a shelf. It is full of sort of items you find in shelves behind bars and pubs. Look at bar. That's the thing of the bar. Look at shelves. On the shelf, 
Behind the bar is usual array of bottles, glasses, and soggy beer mats. Some packets of peanuts and plate of uninviting cheese sandwiches. Order peanuts. However much you're However much you clear your throat, we weave your forefinger or wiggle your eyebrows, the barman pays no attention, but carries on wiping it under part of the, the, the bar. Ask for cheese sandwiches. Speak to uh, barman. I do next. Take towel taken by cheese sandwiches. The barman gives you a cheese sandwich. The bread is like the stuff that stereos come packed in. The cheese would be great for rubbing out spelling mistakes and margarine and pickle have performed an unedifying chemical reaction to produce something that shouldn't be, but is turquoise. Since it is clearly unfit for human consumption, you are grateful to be charged only a pound for it. Buy peanuts. I misspell peanuts. <laughs> Buy peanuts. However much you clear your throat, Forefinger, wiggle your eyebrow, the barman pays all attention. Look. There's a lot of beer here. There's a barman serving at the bar. Drink three pints of beer. Drink beer. You can hear the muffled noise of your home being demolished and the taste of the beer sours in your mouth. You get drunk and have a terrific time for 12 minutes. Are the life and sour soul of the pub. Tell some really good stories, make everyone laugh a lot, and they all clap you on the back and tell you what a great chap you are and then the earth gets unexpectedly demolished. You wake up with a hangover which lasts for all eternity. We're about to give you a score. Put on your peril sensitive sunglasses now. Enter. 30 out of 100. Restore please. Restore the pub area. Let's see. Buy sandwich. Drink the bird beer. Urges for it. It will it will help cushion your system against the coming shock of the matter transference beam. Drink beer. There is a distant crash, which Ford explains is nothing to worry about. Probably just your house being knocked down. So save our game. That's pub. Go east. Country Lane, you see the huge bulldozer heaving itself among the cloud of brick dust, which is all, all that remains of your home. As you start up, up the lane, a small dog runs up to you, yapping. Ford hurries to you, after you. Give dog... Give dog cheese sandwich. The dog is deeply moved. With powerful sweeps in of its tail, it indicates that it, that it regards the cheese sandwich as one of the great cheese sandwiches. Nine out of ten pet owners would could happen by this at this point, expressing any preference they pleased. But this dog would spurn both 
them and all their tins. This is a dog which has met its main sandwich. It eats with passion and ignores a passing microscopic space fleet. <laughs> microscopic. <laughs> so save our game as... Back to Arthur's house. Look, Julian, the road runs from your home to the north toward the village pub to the west. Fort Prefect is here. There is a dog here. Front of house. Front of house. There is no east. South. Southeast. Southwest. North. Front of house. Mr. Foster from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Ford hurries after you. front of house there's a huge pile of rubble to the north a path leads around it to the northeast and northwest and a country lane is visible to the south Fort prefect is here mr. Prosser from the local council he is standing on the other side of the bulldozer he seems to be wearing a digital watch all right what do we do now uh, look at Ford you see nothing special about Ford Prefect. With a noise like a cross between Led Zeppelin's farewell concert and the eruption of Krakatoa, a huge fleet of Vogon constructor ships flies overhead and announces that the Earth will be demolished to make way for a new hyperspace bypass in two of your Earth minutes. In all the turmoil, you drop the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, and it rolls away. It is the least of your worries. And anyway, you've been trying to get rid of it for 44 years. Okay, let's look. Um, Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. The vast yellow ships thunder across the sky, spreading va waves of terror and panic in their wake. The voice of the Vogon captain slams across the country, insisting that the planning charts and dem demolition orders, the demolition order orders, have been available at the local planning office in Alpha Centauri for 50 years, and it's too late to start making a fuss about it now. Throughout the noise, Ford is shouting at you. He removes a small black device from a satchel, but accidentally drops it at your feet. Pick up small black device. Fierce, okay, taken. Uh, fierce gales whip across the land and thunder begin, uh, begin, uh, bangs continuously through the air in the wake of the giant ship. Ford fights to reach you, but the wind is too fierce. Further announcements from the Vogon captain make it clear that that demolition will begin in just a few seconds. Through the blinding rain, you see lights flickering on the small device. All right, let's look at, uh, we'll save this as, uh, flickering device. Look at device. The electronic sub ether signaling device is shaped like a small fist with an extended thumb. Various lights along its knuckles are currently blinking widely, widely, indicating a spaceship in the vicinity. It has two small buttons 
a red one labeled call engineer and a green one labeled hitchhike it bears a small label which reads another fine product of the serious cybernetics corporation affixed to the thumb is a lifetime guarantee red one labeled call engineer and green one called labeled hitchhike press green button lights whirl sickly around your head the ground arches away between beneath your feet and every atom of your being is scrambled an experience you're probably going to have to get used to you are in dark look you can hear nothing smell nothing taste nothing see nothing feel nothing and you are not even certain who you are Now smell. Smell darkness. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you are not certainly certain where who you are. You can hear nothing, see nothing, smell nothing. Any, you can't see anything, feel anything, or taste anything, and do not even know where you are or who you are, or how you get there. Look. You can hear nothing, say something, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even certain who you are. Smell. Okay, finally. It does smell a bit. There's something pugnant being waved under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You can make out a shadow moving in the dark. It is of course well known that careless talk costs lives, but the full scale of the problem is not always appreciated. For instance, the, at the exact moment you said, smelling look at shadow, a freak wormhole opened in the fabric of the space-time continuing and carried your words far, far back in time across almost infinite reaches of space to a distant galaxy where strange and warlike beings were poised on the brink of frightful interstellar battle. The two opposing leaders were meeting for the last time. A dreadful silence fell across the conference table as the commander of the Velahurgs, resplendent in his black jeweled blattle shorts, gazed levelly at the Gagovant bleeder squatting opposite him in a cloud of green, sweet smelling steam. As a million sleek and horribly beweaponed star cruisers poised to unleash Electric death had a single word of command. The Villa Herg challenged his vile enemy to take back what it had said about his mother. The creature stirred in its sickly broiling vapor, and at that very moment the words smelling look at shadow drifted across the conference table. Unfortunately, in the Villerg tongue, this was the most dreadful insult imaginable, and there was nothing for it but to wage terrible war for centuries. Eventually, the error was detached, detected, but over 250,000 worlds, their peoples and cultures perished in the Holocaust. You have destroyed most of a small galaxy. Please pick your words with greater care. What do we do now? Look. You can hear nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and certain who you are.
dark. So for oh, look, you're not, you can't see, you hear nothing, look, see nothing, feel nothing, and not even certain who you are. Look, 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 look. Look, feel, darkness. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel. You don't even know who you are. Smell. It does smell a bit. There's something pungent being waved under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You can make out a shadow moving in the dark. Look at shadow. Okay, finally, Vogon hold. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port, and an airlock lies to starboard. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an automatic vector plotter. Ford removes the bottle of Centragian mineral water, which he has been waving under your nose. He tells you that you're aboard a Vogon spaceship and gives you some peanuts. And we're gonna save our game as uh, Vogon Hold. I'm just gonna name this file as Vogon Hold. And we will take a little break. We had a really fun time. I really hope I enjoyed this game. And we're gonna take a little break and we're going to continue on another day. That was uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Infocom Interactive Fiction, a science fiction story, copyright 1984 by Infocom. That was a text adventure game played on Windows Fraught. So if you enjoyed my playing of this game and narrating it for your enjoyment, would you be so kind as to leave a comment on my uh, anchor.fm uh, podcast uh, website account? As well as you can uh, go to my YouTube channel. This this uh, audio will be edited and uploaded on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis on YouTube. Would you be so kind as to leave your comments if you want to uh, hear more of this adventure? Again, in, in, every Tuesday is Text Adventure Tuesday. So let me know in the comments below if you want uh, more of this adventure to continue. Would you be so kind as to like it, favorite, share with your friends on social media? Also subscribe to Video Gamers Oasis and click the notification bell to be notified of future videos. You can also uh, follow me on my anchor.fm account as well as my uh, Twitter account, VJO underscore tweets and Facebook accounts, Video Gamers Oasis. That's all the time we have. Thanks for tuning in to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. This was a special episode of Text Adventure Tuesday. I think I would like to play this game again in the future. It's actually much more enjoyable than the last Text Adventure I played. I like uh, I like this. Not only is this a classic uh, story, but I really like the um, the sense of adventure in a in a strange strange worlds, interstellar worlds, and the uh, tongue in cheek humor. So I'm really having a good time with this. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes of Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast in the future. As inspiration comes, I will let you know new ideas I have. Thanks for watching and, uh, and listening. And have an awesome 2021. Till next time. Bleem, miserable, venge it. Bleem forever, mist English asunder, frapped. Gashi, morphusite, thou expungiest hoop isk, fripping licious whim grunts, a whilst moon grovenly. Formzibs, grand, withoutitude, form into formless bloit. Why not then, moose?
What nonsense am I blathering about? Why, it's Vogon poetry recited by Jelts, the ship captain of the Vogon constructor fleet. The Vogons have recently demolished the Earth to make way for a hyperspace bypass in this story. You are Arthur Dent. Dent is rescued from Earth's destruction by Ford Prefect, a human-like alien writer for the eccentric electronic travel guide, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. By hitchhiking onto a passing Vogon spacecraft. These two hitchhikers eventually end up being forced to hear the Vogon captain, Jeltz, recite excruciating poetry. This and many more delightful misadventures in tonight's Text Adventure Tuesday. In episode 13 of Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. So, pour a steaming cup of hot tea, stick a babel fish in your right ear, and listen up. The text adventure continues in a few moments. Hello, welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And I'm your host, Jeremy. And we're going to continue on our playing of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Infocom Interactive Fiction, a science fiction story. Copyright 1984 by Infocom Incorporated. All rights reserved. And we're continuing on where we left off. We were in our hero, um, Arthur Dent, was transported into the Vogon ship. So let's continue on in our adventure on the Vogon ship. Let's type in, we're going to be playing for like, uh, I don't know, playing for maximum an hour. We won't be playing beyond that. Let's type in, look. Vogon hold. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and un undi unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port, and an airlock lies to starboard. Ford Prefect is here. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. Okay. Speak to Ford Prefect. Hmm, Ford Prefect looks at you expectantly as if seemed to, to be about to talk. Um, let's see, what should I do here? Look at glass case. Glass case is closed. Attached to it are a keyboard and a switch. You begin to feel distinctly groggy. should we do? You feel stronger as the peanuts replace some of the protein you lost in the matter transference beam. T. 
take off gown. Okay, you're no longer wearing the gown. Hang on hook. Hang gown on hook. Ford yawns. Matter transference always tires me out. I'm going to take a nap. He places something on top of his satchel. If you have any questions, here's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Footnote 14. Ford lowers his voice to a whisper. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but you'll never be able to finish the game without consulting the guide about lots of stuff. As he curls up in the corner and begins snoring, you pick up the Hitchhiker's Guide. Right then, let's say, um, save the game as we'll go on hold. We will save it uh, the date as 24th. Consult, consult book. The gown is now hanging from the hook, covering a tiny hole. Hmm. Look at drain. You see nothing special about the drain. Put towel over drain. That's easy for you to say since you don't even have the towel. Nick, take Ford's satchel. Take satchel. Taken. Open satchel. Can it's not yours, it's Ford's and it's private. Get towel. Taken. Okay, get the towel. Now take the towel. Now get the towel. Put towel over drain. Towel completely covers the drain. Save our game progress. Put satchel in front of panel. Okay, the satchel is lying on its side in front of the tiny robot panel. Put the junk mail on the satchel. Okay, the loose pile of junk mail is now sitting on the satchel. Press button. Which button do you mean? The dispenser button or red button? The red button or the green button? Press dispenser button.
A single babel fish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and hits the dressing gown. The fish slides down the sleeve of the gown and falls to the floor, landing on the towel. A split second later, a tiny cleaning robot whizzes across the floor, grabs the fish and continues its breakneck pace toward a tiny robot panel at the base of the wall. The robot plows into the satchel, sending the babel fish flying through the air in a graceful arc surrounded by a cloud of junk mail. Another robot flies in and begins madly collecting the cluttered plume of mail. The babel fish continues its flight, landing with a loud squish in your ear. All right, we're going to save this game as Babelfish. All right, saved. Read book. Um, let's look at the Hitchhiker's Guide. Look at book. Look at Ford. He's sleeping. Look at Satchel. The satchel which is closed is fairly bulky. Open Satchel. You can't. It's not yours. It's Ford's and it's private. An announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. This is the captain. My instruments show that we've picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders. And when my guards find you, I'll have you thrown into space. On second thought, maybe I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Now what? Press switch. The recording plays. To open the case, type in the third word from the second verse of the captain's current favorite poem. Warning. An incorrect input will cause the case to explode. An announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. This is the captain. My instruments show that we've picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders and when my guards find you, They'll have you thrown into space. On second thought, maybe I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Uh, we're going to find out uh, the second verse. Press key. Uh, press button. Which button means the dispenser button, the red button, or the or the green button. Press the dispenser button. Announcement is coming for the ship's intercom. This is the captain. My instruments show that we've picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders. When my guards find you, they'll have you thrown into space. 
On second thought, maybe I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Uh, type in babblefish. Listen. Or listen to. Um, computer. Uh, computer. Uh, intercom. Uh, look. Bogon Holt is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses. Um, I remember glass in the glass case with a switch and a keyboard. Guards burst in and grab you and Ford, which comes, who comes slowly awake. They drag you down the corridor to a large cabin, where they strap you to a large menacing, to large menacing chairs. Captain's quarters in the poetry appreciation chair. This is the cabin of the Vogon captain. You and Ford are strapped into poetry appreciation chairs. The captain is indescribably hideous, indescribably blubbery, and indescribably mid to dark green. He is holding samples of his favorite poetry. Speak, look, um, look at Captain. See nothing special about the Volgan Captain. Say to Volgan Captain, hello. Say hello to Volgan Captain. Say hello to Volgan to the Volgan Captain. Use the word hello in a way I don't understand. Speak to Vogon Captain. One of, uh, one of the guards lightly bashes your skull with the butt of his weapon. This is a poetry appreciation session, prisoner. No talking. Listen to Vogon poetry. The Vogon captain hasn't begun yet. If he's going to read us his poetry, mutters Ford, sweating profusely. Just pray he softens us off, up with some cudgels first. Hello, hitchhikers, begins the Vogon captain. I've decided to read you a verse of my poetry. Listen, listen to poetry. Listen. Listen to Vogon poetry. The Vogon captain has begun yet. Oh, freddled, grunt, bugly, thy nectarations are to me. Listen to Vogon poetry. You have no choice. Why not relax and enjoy it? As plurdled. Gabble blotchets on a lurgid bee. Listen. We're going to save this as uh, save this as Vogon poetry. Listen. To Vogon Poetry. So I've just saved my file as listen to Vogon Poetry, Vogon Poetry file. You have no choice, why not relax and enjoy it? Group, I implore thee, my footing, my footing, turling drones. Type listen. You have no choice, why not relax and enjoy it? And who piteously drangle me with crinkly bindle whirls, or I will bend thee in the gobber warts with my 
Blunger Crunchians. See if I don't. Type listen. Listen to Vogon poetry. You have no choice. Why not relax and enjoy it? You didn't seem to enjoy my poem at all. Guards. Toss them out the airlock. The guard grabs you and Ford and drags you toward the hold. Ford whispers, don't worry. I'll, I'll think of something. Vogon hold. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses. Unwashed cups and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies the port and an airlock lies the starboard. Your gown is hanging from the, a hook and towel is draped over a drain on the floor. There is a satchel here resting in front of the tiny robot panel. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case container contains an atomic vector plotter. The guard releases you and Ford and begins cycling the air in the airlock. Hey guard, shouts Ford. Do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Shouting, stomping around, shooting people? Is it really a fulfilling career? didn't do something right so I'm gonna load where I left off I think I forgot to um, do something at the folk on poetry section it's a light lesson you have no choice why not relax and enjoy it group I implore thee my footning turling drone so I had to go back and let's type in enjoy Group, I implore thee, my footing turtle drums. What do you want? What do you want to enjoy? Enjoy poetry. You realize that although the Vogan poetry is indeed astoundingly bad, worse things happen at sea, and in fact at school, with an effort of which Hercules himself would have patted you on the back. You grit your teeth and enjoy the stuff. Now we're doing the right thing. I'm going to bring my uh, my notes. I got my notes here. I'm supposed to type in a certain word. First, second, or, or third word. I'll type in and, whoop, chiously, drangle me with crinkly bindle, bindle wordles, or or I will rend thee in the in the gobber warts 
with my blun blurgle crunch hyun see if I don't Vogon poetry you'll save this as Vogon poetry I'll save it under the game. <laughs> We're just under video section. So the poetry is the second the second verse and the um, and hoopsiously drangle me with crinkly bindle wordles or I will render thee in the gobble warts with my blunder crunchian see if I don't I'll uh, enjoy type enjoy enjoy poetry hey let's not overdo it okay you enjoy. You look like you enjoyed my poem. I think yes. I think I'll read the next verse. Also, enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Bleem, miserable venchit. Bleem forever, missed English asunder frapped. Listen to poetry. Enjoy poetry. Just keep enjoying it. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Gashi morfu sight, thou expunges quupsix. Enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Flipping licious wimble, whim grunts, guns, a whilst moon grovenly corb zibs. Enjoy poetry. Garun, without tattooed form into formless bloit, why not then? Moose! Enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Since you have somehow managed to survive two verses of my poetry, I have no choice but to space you. Guards! A guard grabs you in Ford and drags you toward the hold. Ford whispers, don't worry, I'll think of something. Vogon hold. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and identifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port and an airlock lies to starboard. Your gown is hanging up from a hook and a towel is draped over a drain on the floor. There is a satchel here resting in front of the tiny robot panel. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. The guard releases you and Ford and begins cycling the air in the airlock. Hey guard, shouts Ford, do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Shouting, stomping around, shooting people. Is it really a fulfilling career? Alright, what do we do now? Um, Stop panicking. You know, said author, at times like this, when I'm trapped in a Vogon airlock with a man from Beetle Goose, I'm about to die of asphyxiation in deep space, and I really wish to. I listened to what my mother told me when I was young. Why? What? What did she tell you? I don't know. I didn't listen.
What happens next? Asked Arthur. Well, the hatchway in front of us will automatically open. We'll fix the gate. You're going to die. Yes, said the board. Except, no, wait a minute. He suddenly lunged across the chamber at something in Arthur's line of vision. What's the switch? He cried. What? Where? Cried Arthur, twi uh, twisting around. No, I was only fooling the door. We are going to die after all. What is the word? Commands and shortcuts with a list of important commands. There's shortcuts and also a list of recognized verbs, both of them which come from the original manual. Vogon ship. Footnotes. So, so far my, my uh, progress according to the IGN game, drinking or enjoying the beer, okay, that's, that's done already, arriving at the Vogon hold, that's 8 points, getting the babble fish in your ear, that's 12 points, enjoying the Vogon poetry, that's 15 point, opening the glass case in the Vogon hold. Entering the engine room at the Heart of Gold. Um, opening the glass in the Volcon Hold. Open glass. It won't budge. <clears throat> Ford continues to talk <clears throat> to the guard <clears throat> into a sudden career change.
Um, type clue. Type clue. The hold of the Vogon ship is virtually undamaged by the explosion of the glass case. You, however, are blasted into a tiny bits and smeared all over this room. Servo cleaning robots fly and wipe off the glass case. You, however, uh, you have died. We are about to give you your score. Pull, pull it on your peril sensitive sunglasses now. Hit return or enter when ready. Your score is 60 out of a possible 400 in 99 turns. Uh, restore. I'm going to go back to the Wogan um, poetry. In fact, I'm going to restore a little bit further back. Wogan hold. Look. At the corner of a glass case is a switch and a keyboard. It looks like glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. Get towel. You begin to feel distinctly groggy. Eat peanuts. You feel stronger as the peanuts replace some of the protein you lost in the matter transference beam. Get towel. You already have it. Hold. Put towel on drain. Towel completely covers the drain. Ford yawns. Matter transference always tires me out. I'm going to take a nap. <sighs> he places something on top of his satchel. If you have any questions, here's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Footnote 14. Ford lowers his voice to whisper. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but you never... You'll never be able to finish the game without consulting the guide about lots of stuff. As he curls up in a corner and begins snoring, you pick up the Hitchhiker's Guide. Read the Hitchhiker's Guide. Try consult guide about. Consult guide about something. Um, about Vogons. Consult guide about Vogons. The guide checks through its sub ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry. Vogons, whose specialties are bureaucracy and planet smashing, are the most unpleasant race in the galaxy. They wouldn't think twice about throwing someone into space and wouldn't lift a finger to save their own grandmother from the ravenous bug bladder beast of trawl. Also, see the entries on Vogon Poetry and the Ravenous Blood Bug Bladder Beast of Troll. Let's save our game as um, Vogon. We'll consult this as Consult Hitchhiker's Guide. Now we're getting somewhere. Consult guide about Vogon poetry. Consult guide about Vogon poetry. The guide checks through its sub ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry. Vogon poetry is so awful that even the Sarcopsy of Blurfon XII, or, or Blurfon 12, whose religion strictly forbids the taking of one's life, consider suicide a preferable alternative to a Vogon poetry reading. Alright, consult guide about. Excuse me. The ravenous bug bladder beast of troll. 
The ravenous bug, bug bladder beast of Troll is a mind-boggling stupid animal. It has almost no capacity of lear for learning from experience and is therefore surprised by virtually everything that happens to it. Here is an example of how stupid it is. It thinks that if you can't see it, it can't see you. Okay. Its behavior would be quite endearing if it wasn't spoilt by this one thing. It is the most violently carnivorous creature in the galaxy. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Save her progress. As consult Hitchhiker Guide. And the date is the 24th of this recording. And um, that's next. Get water. You can't see the water here. Look at shadow. Look at dispenser. The dispenser is tall, has a button at around eye level, and says Babblefish in large letters. Anything dispensed would probably come out of the slot at around knee level. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Remove gown. Okay, you're no longer wearing the gown. Put gown on hook. The gown is now hanging from the hook, covering a tiny hole. Save our progress. Get satchel. Taken. Put satchel over panel. Okay, the satchel is lying on its side in front of the tiny robot panel. Put mail on satchel. Okay, the loose pile of junk mail is now sitting on the satchel. I'm going to resave this as Vogue on hold. Now we're going to press dispenser button. Press dispenser button. A single babble fish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and hits the dressing gown. The fish slides down the sleeve of the gown and falls to the floor, landing on the towel. A split second later, a cl tiny cleaning robot whizzes across the floor grabs the fish and continues its breakneck pace 
toward a tiny robot panel at the base of the wall. The robot plows into the satchel, sending the babble fish flying through the air in a graceful arc, surrounded by a cloud of junk mail. Another robot flies in and begins madly collecting the cluttered plume of mail. The babble fish continues its flight, landing with a loud squish in your ear. So it's in the, my ear now. Say the game as Vogon Hold Babble Fish. Consult book about Babel fish. Consult read consult Hitchhiker's Hiker's Guide. Consult guide. You want to consult the guide about consult guide about babble fish. The guide checks through its sub ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry A mind bogglingly improbable creature. A babble fish, when placed in one's ear, allows one to understand any language. That's, that's got to be something that's beneficial for Arthur. Um, look at panel. The panel, only a few inches high, is currently closed. Type clue to panel. You, the hold on the Vogon ship is virtually undamaged by the explosion of the glass case. You, however, are blasted into tiny bits and smeared all over the table. Several clearing robots, you have died. You have, you have to give me your score. Your score is 45 out of a possible 484 turns. Oh, man. Do you want to restore? Yes, restore. Vogon hold babblefish. Look. The squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and an undifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port, and an airlock lies to starboard. Your gown is hanging from a hook, and a towel is draped over a drain on the floor. There is one. There's a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know. There's a thing that that your aunt gave you that you don't know what it, what it, what it is here. There's a satchel here, resting in front of the tiny robot panel. Ford is in the corner, snoring loudly. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner of is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an atomic vector plotter.
press switch. Press switch. A recording plays to open the case. Type in the third word from the second verse of the captain's favorite poem, Warning, and a correct input will cause the case to explode. Type in clue. Let's save our game as um, save it as press switch we're going to hold press switch all right uh, type in clue type brackets clue the word clue. Type quote quotations clue. You hold the Vogon ship is virtually undamaged in the explosion of the glass case. Um, 45 out of four, possible 400. Restore game. I'll type in consult press switch. Restore. Press switch. Press switch. A recording claim, claim plays. To open the case, type in the third word from the second verse of the captain of the current of the captain's favorite poem. Type in the third word from the second verse. An announcement is is coming over the ship's intercom. This is the captain. My instruments show that we picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders. Excuse me. And when my guards find you, they'll have you thrown into space. On second thought, maybe I'll read you. I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Type in the third word from the second verse. What is the third word from the second verse? Vogon began to read. That's the first verse. The second verse. He could dimly see beside him. Arthur dwelling and rolling in a seat. He clenched his teeth. Group, I implore thee. Continued the merciless Vogon. My footing turnal in Rome's. His voice was rising to a horrible pitch of impassioned stridency. And hoopsiously drangle me with crinkly bindle wurbles. Type the third word from the second verse. Type Type Drangle. You, the hold of the Vogon ship is virtually undamaged by the explosion of, the, of a glass case. You, however, are blasted into tiny bits and smeared all over the room. Several clean robots fly in and wipe near off the walls. <sighs> Let's restore the game. Switch. Press switch. According to place to open the case, type in the third word from the second verse. And we still have a captain who's looking for us.
So I'm looking at the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, fandom website. <clears throat> oh, freddled grunt bugly, thy micturations are to me with big yawning. That can't be it. The third word is lurgid. Type lurgid. Lurgid? With a G. Lurgid with an I. Type in lurgid. Ah, oh, still. Um. Return, restore. Type clue. Press switch. Okay, to, to open the case, type in the third word from the second verse. Type clue. Type lurgid. Store. Okay, so what do we do now? Um, look, it's a squall room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and an unreliable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port, and an airlock lies to starboard. Your gown is hanging from a hook on a tile draped over the drain of the floor. There is a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is about. What it, you don't know what it is here. There is a satchel here, resting in front of the tiny robot panel. Sitting on top of it is a loose pile of junk mail. Ford is in the corner, snoring loudly. Along one wall is a total dispensing machine in the corner of a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the class contains an atomic vector plotter. Look at glass plate case. The glass case is closed. Attached to it are a keyboard and a switch. An announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. Eveputs Evapsitsutu Nitherloso Quixo Oxo blah blah blah. It's all gobbledygook. I forgot. I didn't get the uh babble fish. Eveputs Evapsitsutu Nitherloso Quixo Oxo blah blah blah. It's all gobbledygook. I forgot. I didn't get the uh, babble fish.
put towel. Okay, this is obviously not where I want to go. Or switch. Look. Okay. <clears throat> Wogan Hold. This is a squalor room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port, and an airlock lies to starboard. Your gown is hanging from a hook, and a towel is draped over a train on the floor. There is a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is here. There is a satchel here resting in front of the, of the tiny robot panel. Ford is in the corner, snoring loudly. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like a glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. An announcement is coming over the ship intercom. This is the captain. My instruments show that we've picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders. And when my guards find you, I'll have you thrown into space. On second thought, maybe I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Look. At glass, at, at at atomic vector plotter. The atomic vector plotter has a small receptacle and a long dangly bit. It bears a small label which reads, another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. An announcement comes over the ship's intercom, the same as before. Let's look. Look, Vogon hold. Guards burst in and grab you and Ford, which comes slowly awake. Who comes slowly awake? They drag you and down the corridor to a large cabin where they strap you into a large menacing chair. It's large menacing chairs. Captain's quarters in the poetry appreciation chair. This is the cabin of the Vogon captain. You and Ford are strapped into a po to poetry appreciation chairs. The captain is indescribably hideous, indescribably blubbery, and indescribably mid to dark green. He is holding samples of his favorite favorite poetry. Save the game as we'll save a Vogon poetry. Yes, I want to replace it. type in enjoy poetry the Vogan captain hasn't begun yet look at captain you see nothing special about the Vogan captain if he's going to read his po us his poetry mutters Ford sweating profusely just pray softens us up with some cudgels first hello hitchhikers begins the Vogan captain I've decided to read you a verse of my poetry. Type in enjoy poetry. Vogon Captain has begun yet. Oh, hasn't begun yet. Oh, freddled grunt bugly, thy naturations are to me. That's the first v verse. Oh, freddled grunt bugly, he begins. Thy mecturations, mecturations are to me. Enjoy poetry. You realize that, although the Vogan poetry is indeed astoundingly bad, worse things happen at sea, and in fact at school, with an effort for which Hercules himself would have patted you on the back, you grit your teeth and enjoy the stuff. As plurred old gobble blotchets on a lurgid bee. the first verse, I believe. Arg went for it, perfect. Okay, uh, enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not undo overdo it, okay? Group, I implore thee, my footning turtle turling drones. Hey, that's, is that the second verse right there?
group group I implore thee my footing turling rooms so that's the word that's the f first verse I believe enjoy poetry hey let's not overdo it okay and hoopsiously drangle me with crinkle brindle whirls where I will render thee in the the goober and warts with my blurngle crunchian see if I don't enjoy poetry hey let's not overdo it okay you looked like you enjoyed my poem I think yes I think I'll read the next verse also. Enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Bleem, miserable, vench it. Bleem, forever, mistinglish, asunder, frapped. Enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Gashi, morfusit. Thou expungious kupisk. Enjoy poetry. Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? Fripping lishish whim guns, a whilst moon guvenly corm zibs. Enjoy poetry. Garum without tattooed, form into formless bloit. Why not then, moose? Enjoy poetry. Vogon hold. Um, since you have somehow managed to survive two verses of my poetry, I have no choice but to space you. Guards! A guard grabs you and Ford and drags you toward the hold. Ford whispers, don't worry, I'll think of something. The Vogon hold. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. A door lies to port and an airlock lies to starboard. Your gown is hanging from a hook and a towel is draped over a drain on the floor. There is a satchel here resting in front of the tiny robot panel. Up along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a, t a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. The guard releases you and Ford and begins cycling the air in the airlock. Hey guard! shouts Ford. Do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Shouting? Stomping around? Shooting people? Is it really a fulfilling career? Let's save our game. Vogon hold. After poetry. It's always good to identify your file file names. And push switch. A recording plays to open the case. Type in the third word from the second verse of the captain's current favorite poem. Warning and incorrect input will cause the case to explode. Ford continues trying to talk the guard into a sudden career change. So we want to type the word. So we're going to make sure we get this right. Bleem miserable venchant. To open case, type in the third word from the second verse of the captain current of the captain's current favorite poem. Type in the third word, and the third word is venchant. Type. What's that word again? I get that word exactly. Venchit. I don't know the word venchit. Type quotes. Venchit. The glass case opens! I did it! Ford continues 
line to talk the guard into a sudden career change. We're going to save this progress. Vogue on hold. Glass case open. Glass case opens. Take atomic vector plotter. Taken. For continues to, uh, trying to take talk the guard into sudden career change. I'm going to save the game as uh, Vogon hold atomic vector plotter. All right, we got that part done. Now what? Take towel. Taken. Four continues to talk to guard and sudden career change. Take gown. Taken. The guard says, well, all things considered, I guess I like being a guard, especially the shouting resistance is useless. He throws you and Ford into an airlock and closes the door. Airlock. This airlock has massive doors to port and starboard. Um... The airlock has massive doors to port and stairlock. Look, let's save our game as uh, vector plotter, and we'll save it as Vogon hold airlock. Let's look. This airlock has massive doors to port and starboard. Ford Prefect is here. Ford points at the outer door. In about two minutes, it will open and we'll be ejected into the vacuum of space. But don't panic. I'll think of something. Couldn't the, um... Press green button. Every molecule in your body gets pulled away and every other molecule. Then suddenly they snap back together again like elastic and you'll find with a dizzying head and very sore molecules that you are in dark. Look, you can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste something. See nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even certain where you are. Type in here. Darkness. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything and do not even know where you are and who you are and how you got there. Let's type EFT. You can't hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even sure where you are. Look. Can't see anything, feel, smell nothing, feel nothing. I don't even know where you are and how you got there. Look. Here. Here. Darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There is an exit to port. Look. You can't see anything, smell nothing, feel nothing, 
or taste anything. You don't even know where you are, where you are, where you got there. Here. Darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from above. There is an exit to port. Type in here. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from up far above. There's an exit to port. Exit. You can't see anything, you smell nothing, feel nothing, or taste anything. Here. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive. Keep, let's tip, keep typing here. You keep hearing the, the hum of the star drive. Here, 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 here. Oh, um, are we inside the ship? Look, stand up. You can't do anything. Here. Um, what else can we do? We'll save it as Heart of Gold. That's the ship, I believe. see nothing. Look. Port. You can't go that way. Look. Exit. I'm in here. Listen. Here, uh, listen, uh, hear, hum. Sound comes from above, far above. Look up. Get brochure. see any brochure here. Look. You can't see anything or hear nothing. Here. 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 Go up. You can't go up that way. Go to exit to port. Port. What am I supposed to do now? AFT. It's AFT. Okay. Entry bay number two. This is an entry bay for the Heart of Gold. A corridor lies aft of the here. There is a sales brochure here. This looks like that incredible new infinite improbability drive spaceship. The heart of gold, says Ford, with gr growing excitement. Announcement, announcement! This is Eddie, the shipboard computer. We have just picked up two hitchhikers at an improbability factor of two to the 21,914th um, power to, two, to one against. All right, what do I do now? Uh, take brochure. Take brochure. Taken. Come on, let's let's look for the bridge. You follow forward and eventually come to the bridge. This is the bridge at the heart of gold. A gangway leads down and steam comes. 
from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard con computer. At the controls, apparently expecting you and Ford, are a man with more than the usual number of heads. The name Zaphod is sti stitched on his shirt. And a dark-haired woman holding a handbag. Both seem somehow familiar. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. Let's save our game as Heart of Gold Bridge. And on that note, we will save the game and we'll head on out because that was a big accomplishment. We were able to escape the Vogon ship and now we're going to take a little break and continue on next week. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Hello and welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis, playful podcast, and it's Text Adventure Tuesday, and we are playing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Infocom Interactive Fiction, a science fiction story, copyright 1984 by Infocom Incorporated, all rights reserved. And we're playing the text adventure game, and just want to let you know, um, throughout the adventure, uh, we I will be consulting a walkthrough just to speed things up. So I'm not. I won't uh, continuously giving you, be giving you dead air. I want to give you some extra content. So will we be uh, referring to the um, the content, uh, the text adventure game uh, walkthrough, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy walkthrough from IGN by uh, John Coxon. He's doing. He did some. Uh, he did a walkthrough of the game just to help speed the process up. So we're at the Heart of Gold right now. We're in the bridge of the Heart of Gold, and we're just going to work our way through this spaceship to see what we can do. So at the Heart of Gold, 3.3, um, entry bay number two, if you want to, you can get the brochure, but it doesn't really matter. It will, um, will automatically go to the bridge. Okay, so we're at the bridge. I think we're at the bridge right now. So type in AFT or uh, EFT. You can't go that way. Hey, Zaphod, how you doing, says Ford. He's cool, not bad. Ford, great to see you, replies Zaphod. He's cooler. You suddenly realize that the woman is Trisha. You suddenly w realize that the woman is Trisha McMillan. Call me Trillian, whom you were trying to pick up at a party in Islington just a few weeks ago. And that Zaphod is the guy she eventually left the party with. Odd. So let's look. Look, bridge. This is the bridge of the Heart of Gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entryway entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. Ford Prefect is here. There is a molecular, molecular hyperwave pincer here. Like my spaceship, Ford? Zephod asks. Your spaceship, says Ford, losing his cool for a second. Yeah. I stole it, Zephod admits. I'm going to use it to find the legendary lost planet of Maggrathia. Let's go sit in the sauna while I explain. Zephod, Ford, and Trillium all head off to port. All right, let's see what we can do here. Um, <clears throat>
at the bridge, according to the, the walkthrough, I can drop everything from, from my uh, towel and the babe, uh, drop everything apart from your towel and the babel fish. Then go. Then go to, uh, yeah, go AFT. Okay, so um, it means following them, I guess. So inventory. Inventory, you have no tea, a sales brochure, your gown. It looks like your gown contains pocket fluff, a towel, an atomic vector plotter, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is, a babel fish in your ear, the hitchhiker's guide, an electronic sub ether signaling device, a flathead screwdriver, a toothbrush. So according to the, the walkthrough, Drop everything except the towel and the babel fish. So leave everything else. Um, drop toothbrush. Toothbrush drop, uh, dropped. M Marvin wanders off. Um, drop fl uh, flathead. Drop screwdriver. Oh, drop. I misspelled drop. Drop screw driver dropped okay um drop electronic sub ether signaling device Dropped. I'm not going to drop the Hitchhiker's Guide though. Um, drop Atomic Vector Plotter. Dropped. Drop Pocket Fluff. Dropped. Um, okay, let's uh, see what else we can do here. We're gonna go AFT now. AFT. You can't go that way. Well, follow Zaphod. You have no idea where Zaphod Beaver Rocks is. North. South. Can't go that way. South. East. Um, west. You enter the sauna. After several hours, you come out a changed man. All right, what else do we want to do here? You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots.
go AFT. Okay, go um, west. You do the sauna, you come out of change land, go north, south, west. Okay, um, look. Bridge. This is the bridge of the heart of gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There is a po there is pocket fluff here. Lying on the deck is a plotter. There is an electronic sub ether de ceiling device here. There is a flat head screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a handbag here. And there is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. All right, let's save our game as. Um, And we'll update the date to the uh, 2 2. Heart of Gold. Okay. Go to Gangway. It's here. Go to entrance. Entrance to port. I don't know the word entrance. Eddie. Talk to Eddie. Hmm, Eddie, the shipboard computer looks at you expectantly as it as if you seem to be about to talk. How about um, go to engine room? You'll have to be more specific, I'm afraid. Go AFT. Can't go that way. Go AFT. Go AFT. Can't go that way. You want to do here? Eventually you'll go through. Eventually you do it. T AFT 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 AFT. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you, and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into your room. Look, look at Marvin. You see nothing special about Marvin. Marvin wanders off. AFT, 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 Corridor. Look, this is the bridge of the heart of gold. A gangway leads down. Go down. Corridor, four end. This is w one end of a short corridor that continues uh, AFT aft along the main deck of the heart of gold. Doorways lead to four and port. In addition, a gangway leads upward. Upward. Okay, we finally got getting somewhere. So the the uh, walkthrough from IGN says keep saying AFT and eventually you'll get through. Go AFT. Quarter after end. This is one end of a short corridor that continues. Main deck of the heart of gold. Doors lead AFT and port. In addition, a gangway leads downward. AFT. See, that entrance leads to the infinite improbability drive chamber. It's supposed to be a terribly dangerous area of the ship. Are you sure you want to go in there? Uh, am I sure? Yes. Yes. It's misspelled yes. Absolutely sure? Yes. 
I can tell you don't want to really. You stride away with a spring in your step, wisely leaving the drive chamber safely behind you. Telegrams arrive from well-wishers in all corners of the galaxy congratulating you on your prudence and wisdom, cheering you up immensely. Well, that sucked. Um, AFT? What? You're joking, of course. Can I ask you to reconsider? AFT? Engine room. You're in the infinite improbability drive chamber. Nothing happens. There is nothing to see. Okay. What's next here? Look at the inf let's look at, look around. Look. Look at the room. Engine room. I mean it. There's nothing to see here. Look. Engine room. Okay, okay. There are a few things to s a few things to see here. This is the room that houses the powerful infinite improbability generator that drives the heart of gold. An exit lies for of here. Sitting in the corner is a spare, portable improbability generator. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. Well, I'm supposed to take everything. Take improbability generator. Take improbability generator. You lo your load is too heavy. listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Interactive Fiction Text Adventure Game first released in 1984 and we're playing this on Winfrots. Drop improbability. No, um, let's see. Uh, take take ionic diffusion rasp taken. Take hypersonic pliers taken. Okay, want to go four now. We've taken everything we want. Four. Let's respell that. Four. Quarter after end. Four. Four. End. Um, what else do we want to go? We want to go up. Bridge. There is a pocket. Fl there is pocket fluff here. Lying on the deck is a plotter. There is an electronic sub ether signaling device here. There is a flat head screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a handbag here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. Buddy, no. No. My cat is clawing my furniture. Okay, you feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot 
has stalked miserably into the room. All right, what do we want to do now? Drop drive. And holding the main and probability drive. Drop um, portable improbability drive. Okay, you, I misspelled that. Drop portable improbability drive. Drop pliers. Dropped, drop, grasp, dropped. Let's see our progress so far. Bridge, heart of gold. We want to go to port. Go to port. You use the word port in a way that I don't understand. Port. You enter the sauna, after several hours you come out a changed man. Oh, I for forgot to go, forgot to go down. Go down. Quarter for end. Port. Galley. You are in the galley area of the ship, containing a machine which is in the state which is the state of the art in nutritional technology, a serious cybernetics corporation Nutramat. There is an exit to starboard, a carb carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. Take Carton taken. Touch pad. The Nutramat makes an instant but highly detailed examination of your taste buds, a spectroscopic analysis of your metabolism, and sends tiny experimental signals down your neural pathways to see what you like. A cupful of advanced tea substitute appears in the dispensing slot. Take ATS. Taken. Go up. Where do we want to go now? Starboard. Starboard. Quarter for end. Bridge. Okay, let's drop an uh, inventory. Look at the inventory. You have no tea, advanced tea substitute, a shipping card, and sales brochure, your gown, a towel, a thing your aunt gave you, a maple flesh, and your hitch. Okay, drop the hitchhiker's guide. Dropped. Drop a thing. It falls to the ground with a light thunk. It doesn't do anything else at all. Drop your gown. Dropped. Drop sales brochure. Dropped. Drop shipping carton. Dropped. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you. 
and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. Drop T ATS dropped. Marvin wanders off. Okay, we're gonna look. This is the bridge of the Heart of Gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. A, a, a carton labeled Nutramat computer interface is sitting there here. There is a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. There is a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what is. Uh, know what it is here. Um, lying on the deck is a plotter. Uh, what 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 am I supposed to do with the tea? Put long dangly bit into subs into ATS. Done. Okay, that's done. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Press switch. Press switch. You can't see any switch here. Where is any switch? Look. Switch. You can't see any switch here. Switch. What do you want? To, what do you want to switch? Look. Uh, what am I looking around here? Buddy, settle down. Look at substitute. About the only characteristic it shares with, with T is that of Bronian motion. The long dangling bit is suspended in the cup of advanced T substitute. Put long dangly bit in ATS. But the long daily bit is already advanced T substitute. Okay, I already got that part. What am I supposed to do with it now? Press switch. I can't see any switch here. Look at carton. The carton is labeled Nutramat Computer Interface. It's closed. Press switch. You can't see any switch here. Open carton. Opening the ship carton reveals a strange gun. Okay, a strange gun. Um, 
I'm supposed to do something with, uh... Okay, we need to drop the carton and the tea substitute and put the long dangly bit into the tea substitute. Look at at improbability. Inventory. You have no tea, a towel, a bibble fish. Look at improbability drive. Look at portable improbability drive. Okay, I probably didn't take the portable one. Corridor. Look. AFT. Can't go late. Um, engine room. It's not a verb I recognize. North. East. West, West, look, gangway, go down, quarter face down, okay, AFT, um, corridor, Four. Four. Entry bay number two. Four. EFT end. End. Look. Entry bay number two. This is the entry bay for the heart of gold. A corridor lies AFT of her. AFT. Quarter for end. AFT. Quarter after end. There's a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is here. AFT. Engine room. Sitting in the corner is a spare portable improbability generator. I forgot to pick up. Um, take portable. I didn't take the the portable one. Improb. Improb. Prob. 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 Ability. 
generator taken you are listening to video gamers oasis playful podcast and this is text adventure tuesdays we are playing the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy interactive fiction text adventure game first released in 1984 and we're playing this on win frots all right bridge which um aft you can't go if you have feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. Marvin wanders off. AFT North Quarter after end four four Entry bay number two, four. Um, <clears throat> I need to get back to the bridge. Go up, four, north, south, four. Up after the corridor for end. All right, your bridge. You're at the bridge. We. What do I have? My, uh, what's my inventory? You have no T, a spare improbability drive. Okay, and the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, a towel, a bridge, fi a babel fish in your ear. So drop, drop, spare, M. Pro improbability drive spit drop the spare dropped okay look at spare improb Improbability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord ending with a small plug. It bears a small label which which reads, "Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation." Press switch. Okay, nothing happens. Has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug and a short cord ending with a small plug. Connect cords. Cords. Plug in um, improbability drive. What do you want to plug the probability drive into? Um, outlet. Look. Let's look around. The bridge again we leads down the steam comes from an entrance port to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There was a spare and probability drive here. Oh my gosh. A carton labeled Nutramat computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping 
carton contains a strange gun. There's a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. All these other items are lying on the floor. Okay, I'm looking at the strategywiki.org for extra help here. Plug small cord in plotter. Plugged. Okay. Push switch. I missed spins round your head. You fall into what seems like a bottomless pit. Suddenly you hit the bottom so hard that you wish it had been bottomless. Dark. All right, I think we're getting somewhere now. According to the walkthrough, this will change according to which random scenario you wish to, you're about to visit. You will need to visit the section on dark to look on senses or what to. Okay, let's um look. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you are not entirely certain sure who you are. Smell. You can hear darkness. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, feel nothing, uh, see nothing, and you're not even certain where you are. Uh, feel. Uh, there's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. You do not even know who you are. Listen. You can hear nothing. To nothing, you can't hear anything. You can't smell anything. You can't taste anything. Who am I? There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can smell. You don't even know who you are look dark you can't hear anything see anything smell anything taste you can see nothing hear nothing taste something smell nothing. not even certain who you are touch darkness it does feel a bit cold wet and squishy there seems to be some liquid at your fingertips We need to get out of the dark. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. A random situation. Get. Um, we're going to save the game as. Um, save it as Heart of Gold. Improbability. Generator. Get out of dark. You can hear nothing, see nothing. You can't even feel you are. Press switch. 
You can't see any switch here. Up, right, it, um, north. You can't hear anything that you don't even know how you got here. You know if you're you have completed it because there will be a fluff on Ford satchel on the bridge. I can get back to the bridge. Bridge. Look. Up. Can hear nothing, see nothing, taste nothing, feel. Uh, touch. It does feel a bit cold, wet, and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. Touch. Liquid. It seems coldish. Feel liquid. Look at liquid. It seems coldish. Smell fingertips. I don't know the word fingertips. Smell liquid. It's, it smells just like a liquid. Look at liquid. It seems coldish. Look. You can hear that thing. Stand up. You can hear that thing. Some other thing. AFT. AFT. Look. Dark. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can smell. You don't even know who you are. Let's look at sight. Sight. Look. You can see. When you, when you when will you come to your senses and solve this puzzle? I would like to know. I'm looking for some help here. Let's see here. Listen to darkness. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can smell. You don't even know who you are. Touch. Darkness. It feels a bit cold and wet and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. Examine liquid. It seems coldish. Move up, south, inv um, inventory, you can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, you're not even certain who you are. Um, up, EFT, 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 T, T, EFT, I'm just trying to figure out if this will pass. T, EFT, EFT. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, and you're not even sure where you are. Four out of five sensitive people solve this puzzle right away. <sighs> Press switch. You can't see any switch here. Leave. Stand. Help. <laughs> if you're really stuck, a complete map and invisible clue hint booklet are avail available from your dealer or via mail order from the form that came into your with your package. Oh boy.
According to the strategywiki.org, there's some information that could be helpful. This brings you to the dark area. As before, look until one of the senses disappear. With the T-substitute, you'll be directed to a random location, although you can get an item that allows waiting to cycle through the choices. For each sense, there are two subtle differences. Smell, something pungent waving under the node to layer of the ravenous bug, bug bladder beast of trawl on something being waved under your nose, Vogon hold. Listen, it's deep and distant sound of star drive from above, heart of gold and deep and distant sound dri star drive from below, war chamber, sight. Something in the, at the front of your eyes, country lane, or something in the back of your eyes, presidential speedboat. Feel something cold and wet and squishy, party, or something a bit warm, sperm well. This is, this is something important to, to look at. Something at the front of your eyes. Um, something cold and wet and squishy. Right, type in party maybe? Will that help? Party. That's not a verb uh, that, in that sentence. I don't recognize that. Cold. That's not a verb I recognize. When you're finished with each remote location, you will enter re-enter the dark area. Listen and head to the AFT each time. Listen to darkness. You can see nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and are not in cer entirely certain where you are, who you are. AFT. Um, AFT. 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 AFT, 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 same answer. AFT, AFT, AFT. Don't, ca don't count your senses before they hatch. Smell. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. There's nothing you can taste. Let's um, taste. Can't hear nothing. Look. Ft. 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 T. T. Ft. 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 T. Ft. 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 I can't even sure certain where I am. Ft. T, AFT, AFT, look, smell, touch, feel wet and squishy, AFT, 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 T, AFT, T, AFT, oh my god, it's not gonna exit, <laughs> the thing in taste. Oh my god, I'm I think I'm really stuck here. I'm really having trouble here. Um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy game walkthrough.
listen. EFT, EFT, up. God, where the heck am I supposed to go? Flip switch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart the game, not the whole thing, but just the part where I had the improbability drive. Probably general generator. Okay, look. Smell. Listen. EFT. Up. T. Up, 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 up. When will you come to your senses and solve this puzzle? Up. Press switch. Feel. Cold and wet and squishy. Drink liquid. You are in a large living room. Okay, li there is a large, there is a party going on. Finally, some progress. Other rooms lie to the west and southwest, and the apartment's front door is south of here. Phil is here. Arthur Dent is here. You notice the hostess approaching, but using several mingling couples as cover, as cover, you ma maneuver away. Okay, I'm in the living room now. Let's save our game as living room. Put an asterisk on that. Okay. Listen. What do you want to listen to? Listen to Arthur Dent. At the moment, Arthur Dent makes a sound. Other rooms lie to west and southwest, and the apartment's front doors south of here. Phil is here, Arthur Dent is here. Uh, west. Dining room. You are in a large dining room. You're in a large dining room. There is a party going on. Other rooms lie to the south and east. Oh, right, let's try um, south. Kitchen, you're in a large kitchen. There, kitchen. there is a large party going on. Other rooms lie to the north and northeast. North, dining room. North, east. Can't go the way, look. You're in a large dining room. There's a party going on. So the walkthrough says to look at Arthur. Look at Arthur. You can see Arthur here. Then drop your plate or glass and take the fluff. Drop 
plate dropped. Drop glass. Take fluff. You can't see any fluff here. Inventory. You have a handbag. The hostess whom you're, you've been avoiding all evening scurries up with your plate of ors, ors divorce, hors d'oeuvres. Oh, hello, Trisha. How lovely to see you. I think you dropped this, dear. Look at Phil. You can you can't see Phil here. Look at Trisha. Trisha, you see nothing special about yourself. Trisha dear, says the hostess consistently. Don't you want your plate of hors d'oeuvres? Hors d'oeuvres? Um. Take plate. Taken. The hostess whom you've been avoiding all evening scurries up with your glass of white wine. Oh, hello, Trisha. How lovely to see you. I think you dropped this, dear. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Take glass. Take it. Look. You are in a large dining room. There is a party going on. Other rooms lie to the south and east. You notice the hostess approaching, and you, but using several mingling couples as cover, you maneuver away. Look at Phil. You can't see Veal here. Look at Hostess. You see something special about the hostage. Look. You're in a large dining room. There's a party going on. Other rooms lie to the south and east. You notice the hostess approaching, but using several mingling couples as cover, you move her away. Look at Arthur. You can't see Arthur here. Um, <clears throat> Front of house. North. East. Living room. Phil is here. Arthur Dent is here. Look at Phil. Look at Phil. He is very attractive, if a little weird, and has a slight otherworldly look. You suspect he's a party crasher. An impression reinforced by his inappropriate garb. He seems clothed for a fancy dress party or something because he has what appears to be a large birdcage on his shoulder with a, lo- with a black drape over it. The bird inside must be asleep because you can hear snoring coming from inside it.
Look at Arthur. Dent. Arthur seems nice and well-meaning, but also terribly shy. He has tried to start a conversation with you several times, but still hasn't gotten past hello. He has an enormous, unsightly ball of fluff on his jacket. Take fluff. As is the case so often at parties, you find that you are holding too much and can't pick up anything else. Drop plate. Drop. Drop glass. Drop. Take fluff. You remove the jacket fluff, improving Arthur's appearance greatly. He is clearly touched and starts ha happily to chat away to you. You discover that he is only slightly more interesting to talk to than an averagely interesting wall. The hostess, whom you've been avoiding all evening, scurries up with your plate of, of hors d'oeuvres. Oh, hello, Trisha. How lovely to see you. I think you dropped this, dear. Am I actually supposed to be Trisha? Living room. Save our game so far. Look at Phil. Look at Phil. He is very attractive, if a little weird, and has a slight otherworldly look. You suspect he's a party crasher, an impression reinforced by his inappropriate garb. He seems clothed for a fancy dress party or something, because he has what appears to be a large birdcage on his shoulder with a large with a black drape over it. The bird inside must be asleep because you can hear snoring coming from inside it. Arthur tries unsuc unsuccessfully to interest you by talking about a recent visit to Taverton. Trisha dear, says the hostess insistently, don't you want your plate of or hors d'oeuvres? Take plate. Arthur tries unsuccessfully to interest you by talking about computers. The hostess whom you've been avoiding all evening scurries up with your glass of white wine. Oh, hello, Trisha. How lovely to see you. I think you dropped this, dear. Take wine. Take wine. As in the case so often at parties, you find that you're holding too much, you can't pick up anything else. Arthur tries unsuccessfully to interest you by t talking about how badly Americans make tea. Trisha, dear, says hostess in Sicily, don't you want your glass of white wine? Take glass. As in the case so often at parties, you find that you are holding too much and you can't pick up anything else. Look at Phil. He is very attractive, if a little weird, and has a slight otherworldly look. You suspect he's a party crasher, an impression reinforced by his inappropriate garb. He seems clothed for a fancy dress party or something because he has what appears to be a large birdcage on his shoulder with a black drape over it. The bird inside must be asleep because you can hear snoring coming from inside it. Out of the corner of your eye, you see Phil leering, Phil leering at you. He starts to approach but then notices the hostess with you and veers away. Arthur tries unsuccessfully to interest you by talking about the deteriorating condition of the motorways. Trisha dear, says the hostess insistently, don't you want your glass of white wine? Drop, drop fluff, I have fluff on my hand. Dropped, Arthur tries successfully to interest you by talking about cricket. Trisha dear, says the hostess insistently, don't you want your glass of white wine? Take wine, taken. Arthur tries unsuccessfully to interest you by talking about cricket. Look at Phil. Look at Phil, he is very attractive, if a little weird, and has a slight otherworldly look. You suspect he's a party crasher, an impression reinforced by his inappropriate garb. He seems clothed for a fancy dress party or something, 
because he has what appears to be a large birdcage on his shoulder with a, lar with a black drape over it. The bird inside must be asleep because you can hear snoring coming from inside it. Phil comes and grips your shoulder. Hey babe, this guy boring you? Why not come with me instead? I'm from a different planet. He takes you out to the parking lot where he takes you out to the parking lot where his flashly well where his flashy interorbital ion scooter is parked between two Volkswagens. After mounting it, the scooter accelerates at such a great speed that you black out almost immediately. Everything becomes dark. Look. You can hear nothing. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, taste anything, and you don't even know where you are or how you got there. Touch. Darkness. You can't hear anything, smell anything. Listen to darkness. You can't see anything, feel anything. You're not even certain who you are. Uh, hear. You can't smell, hear, feel. You can't smell, hear, look. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. Touch. Listen. Okay, to darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from abo far above. There is an exit to port. AFT. To dark. AFT, we, we were lying about the exit to port. You emerge from a small doorway. Entry bay number two. Look. Entry bay number two. This is the entry bay for the Heart of Gold. A quarter lies AFT of here. AFT. Quarter, four, end. Up. Okay. So we've uh, we've made a lot of uh, explorations of the Heart of Gold. I think we're going to take a little break. I had a good time. I'm going to do more um, exploration another day because I'm getting a little tired. But we can continue on doing some more um, experiments with the improbability drive another day. We have still more experiments to do with that. But it, uh, I had a good time. Let's save our game as... Uh, Heart of Gold after living room. That way we'll know where we were in the in that point, and so we can return to that save points and continue on another day. You've been listening to Text Adventure Tuesday on Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. I'm Jeremy. We've been playing the the classic Hitchhiker, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure game. I'm going to just uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Infocom Interactive Fiction, a science fiction story, copyright 1984 by Infocom. Incorporated all rights reserved. The there's a link in the description where you can download a. Um, a emulator version of this game uh, that can play on Winfrots, a software that I used to play text adventure games. I'm Jeremy. You've been listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. Take care of each other. Eat healthy food. Drink fresh, pure water. Do a little bit of physical exercise from time to time to uh, break away from the monotony of working at the computer or playing games all the time. And also take time to rest and recharge your batteries. I'll be returning another day with some more interesting discussions on video games, sci-fi, fantasy, horror movies, collectibles, and other geeky content. I'm Jeremy. Thanks for ta tuning in, and we'll talk to you again real soon. I may have some new cool ideas for you besides this one. Till next time, bye. Standing near you are two creatures who are gazing at the star system with terrible hatred in their eyes. One is wearing black jeweled battle shorts and the other is wreathed in a cloud of green, sweet smelling steam. They are engaged in conversation.
the fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. Hello, this is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are continuing our adventure of the text adventure that we're playing with our heroes, Arthur Dent and Ford Prefect, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure game. Arthur and Ford, who have been recently rescued from uh, ejection from a Vogon spaceship cruiser, uh, construction cruiser, have been rescued by the Heart of Gold, including uh, the crew are Trillium, one of the, uh, a girl that he knew on Earth, Zaphod Babelbrox, a strange uh, uh, possibly a two-headed uh, extraterrestrial uh, captain. Marvin, the paranoid android, as well as the computer system on board. They've been rescued, and now they're they're exploring. Uh, Arthur has been exploring the ship past episodes. If you've been listening to my previous episodes. He has, among the various items he's picked up, is a spare improbability drive by turning it on connecting it to a various uh, computer interface and flicking the switch various times he has been transported to various strange worlds and even strange dimensions or times or alternate realities the last episode uh, Arthur was uh, transported and played the role of his ex-girlfriend Trillium He became the girl and back on Earth. And in this episode, he is now transported to a strange uh, ship where there are two opposing extraterrestrial leaders hurling toward the sun. This and much more adventures on this episode of Text Adventure Tuesdays on Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. Stay tuned. Continuing on our adventure with Arthur Arthur Dent exploring the uh, improbability machine on the uh, heart of gold that he, him, him and his buddy uh, Ford have been rescued on. He's experimenting the improbability machine that teleports into various time, times and locations and universes perhaps even w- as well. And he, uh, recently he was uh, playing the role of Trillium, um, a girl that he knew in the past on Earth and he was actually becoming her temporarily, living in her shoes at a party where she eventually gets uh, seduced by the mysterious Zephod Beeblebrox. And she basically rides on his motorcycle or scooter and fly and drive with this uh, very um, swinging uh, individual who turns out to be a uh, high ranking extraterrestrial who is uh, captaining the Heart of Gold. So let's get on with the game. We're gonna look around and see what we can do next. We just came out of that scenario, so we're gonna look, look, look. Bridge, this is the bridge of the Heart of Gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There is a handbag here. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in advanced tea substitute. There is a spare improbability drive here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. 
There is a pocket fluff here. There is an electronic sub-ether signaling device here. There is a flat head screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a molecular, molecular hyperwave pincer here. Let's look at our inventory. You have, in, for inventory, no tea, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is, a towel, a babel fish in your ear. Okay, let's, um, let's look at spare him probability drive. Spare and probability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads, Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. I will sip my beverage. Let's see here. Push switch. The spare and probability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label, which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push switch. Like fog rolling in off the ocean, a shroud of blackness billows toward you. Unlike fog rolling in off the ocean, the blackness hits you like a 16-ton truck. Look. Dark. You can't, can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. You do not even know where you are and who you are and how you got here. There. Here. Darkness. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you are not even certain who you are. What should I do? Smell. Smell darkness. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you are not entirely certain who you are. Touch. You can smell nothing, taste nothing, feel, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even certain who you are. Um, listen. The darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far below. There is an exit to port. All right. Uh, port. Can't go that way. Exit. Can't see anything, smell anything, feel anything. Yes. Okay. How about north? North. Can't go that way. South. War Chamber. Spread before you, astonishingly enough, is the war chamber of a star battle cruiser. Through the domed canopy of the ship, you can see a vast battle fleet flying in formation behind you through the black, glittering emptiness of space. Ahead is a star system towards which you are hurtling at a ter terrifying speed. There is a, there is an extra, pardon me, there is an ultra plasmic vacuum all here. Standing near you are two creatures who are gazing at the star system with terrible hatred in their eyes. One is wearing black jeweled battle shorts and the other is wreathed in a cloud of green, sweet smelling steam. They are engaged in conversation. The fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. Uh, look. War chamber. Uh, before spread before you, astonishing left is the war chamber of a star battle cruiser. Through the domed canopy of the ship, you can see a vast battle fleet flying in formation behind you through the black, glittering emptiness of space. Ahead is a star system towards which you are hurtling at a terrifying speed. There is an ultra plasmic vacuum all here. 
Standing near, you see two creatures who are gazing at the star system with a terrible hatred in their eyes. One is wearing black, jeweled battle shorts, and the other is wreathed in a cloud of green, sweet-smelling steam. They are engaged in conversation. The fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. All right, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Save the game as... Um, Heart of Gold will date this game just in case we die. We can always retrieve our game. So we'll retrieve it as nine, okay? Heart of Gold, and we will call it War Chamber. Save the game in case we'll have, we have to retrieve our game. Uh, what do we do? I want, I want to try to remember what happened in this game. Look at ultra plasmic vacuum all. It looks like every other ultra plasmic vacuum all you've ever seen. The fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. Pick up ultra plasmic vacuum all. Taken. Uh, speak. Look at two. Look at creatures. Which creatures do you mean? The Gu, the G, Guvant leader or the Verhurg leader? Um. Speak. Look at G. Guvant leader. Gugum leader is looking typically Gugavantish. Look at the leg, the hurg leader. It's looking typically Lehurgish. What am I supposed to do with these guys? I'm in the war chamber. I'm gonna I'm gonna do, do, do a little bit of cheating. I'm going to go into the IGN walkthrough of the game. And I'm gonna see what I can do with the war chamber. Okay, the war chamber, get the all. Wait until you see the dog eating the sandwich you gave him earlier. If you don't, you'll have to give Arthur the sandwich as Ford, as Ford for him to give it to the dog. And then you'll be able to do this part. But if you did, after the dog eats the sandwich, you'll go to the maze. Um, can, uh, wait. And passes. Look. War chamber spread before you is the war chamber hurtling at a terrifying speed. Uh, standing before you, two creatures engaged in a conversation. The fleet continues to hurl sunwards. Um, I'm supposed to wait. Get the all. Uh, let's look at the um, inventory. What's my inventory? You have no tea, an ultra plasmic vacuum all. A thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. A towel, a babel fish in your ear. All right, what am I supposed to do now? Wait until you see the dog eating the sandwich you gave him earlier. I'll just keep waiting, I guess. Wait. Right, time passes. Your simple act of kindness at a moment of great personal anxiety. You fed the dog, remember? Now brings rich rewards. The battle fleet plunges toward Earth and spots the dog, which appears to them as a gigantic monster, cheerfully tucking into a cheese sandwich. The Vlahergs and the Gagavans are moved by this simple picture of happiness, compared with the furious savagery of their own lives. They think back to a day when they used to relax over an odd cheese sandwich themselves. Often at sunset, often at sunset after a hearty day working in the fields back in Vlaherg and Govinia, and decide to return and rebuild their homes in a new spirit of harmony 
and cooperation. Grateful, they offer to drop you at the Heart of Gold on their way home. After a brief time, after a brief 900 parsec trip, you are escorted into the transporter chamber of the warship. The transporter glows, and your surroundings change. Maze. This is part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses, all alike. Okay, so what next do I need to do? Okay. This is the war chamber. Now we're in the maze. here. According to the IGN Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy walkthrough, this is in fact your brain, so don't leave anything in here. Here, walk around until you find a particle. Take the particle, which is in fact your common sense, and everything will go dark. Alright, we have to find the particle. The spongy gray. Let's look. Spongy gray maze full of twisty synapses. Look. Maze. This is a part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses, all lot, all alike. Um, north. Maze. This is part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses, all alike. Look around. Uh, look at spongy gray maze. Look at maze. This is part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses all like. Go left. Go, I misspelled left. Go left. I don't know the word left. Uh, move. What do you want to move? Um, forward. <laughs> Another word forward. Um, look. Um, north. 
An electrical impulse across a synapse gap temporarily blocks your way. Okay, finally we're getting somewhere. Let's save this as maze. Maze. All right. Can I go south? Part of a spongy gray maze full of twisted little synapses all like. Go east. Part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses all like. Blocking the gap between two synapses is a large black particle. There seem to be some faint markings on it. Let's look at large black particle. You look at the large black particle. As you look closer, you see inscribed in tiny letters of the, on the particle. Sense. Common for dent, Arthur, for replacement, order part number 31-541. Take particle. Take particle. particle. As you remove the particle, electrical impulses begin leaping madly across the new unblocked synaptic gap. Unfortunately, you were in the gap at the time. Everything becomes dark. All right, getting somewhere now. Save the game as maze, heart of gold maze. Uh, let's look. Dark. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you are not certain who you are. Listen. Listen to darkness. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. You do not even know who you are feel darkness you can f see nothing feel nothing uh, uh, hear nothing taste nothing smell nothing and you cert you are not entirely certain who you are uh, smell darkness you can see nothing feel nothing taste nothing smell nothing and you're not certain who you are how about taste darkness there's nothing you can taste nothing you can see nothing you can feel nothing you can smell and you don't even know who you are see darkness you can see nothing feel nothing taste nothing smell nothing and you're not certain who you are look there's nothing you can taste and nothing you can smell or anything else uh, feel nothing stand up you can't see anything smell nothing feel nothing or taste nothing anything and you don't even know who you are and how you got here uh, AFK um, AFT supposed to do now wait you can see nothing feel nothing taste something smell nothing not certainly hurt certain who you are listen okay to darkness you hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above there is an exit to port port and go that way exit can't see anything um up go up and go the way north south we were lying about the exit to port you emerge from a small doorway entry bay number two look number two this is the entry bay for the heart of gold a quarter lies aft up here aft quarter for end corridor it's not a verb i can in that sentence up it's this this there is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here this is on the bridge lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive 
the plotter's long dangly bit of submergent advanced tea substitute. There is a spare improbability drive. Okay, let's see if I can save the game here. Back on the bridge after maze. Okay, good. Uh, drink. Look at advanced tea substitute. Well, the only characteristic it shares with tea is that of a bro Brownian motion. The long gangly bit is suspended in a cup of advanced tea substitute. Drink advanced tea substitute. You're not holding the cup. Pick up cup. Pick up tea. You're talking complete nonsense. Pull yourself together. Pick up take advanced tea substitute taken drink advanced tea substitute drink advanced tea substitute it tastes almost but not quite entirely like, like tea it's absolutely disgusting the cup itself vaporizes part of the galactic anti-litter program Okay, well that is definitely efficient cup of tea that the cup actually dissolves or vaporizes in front of you after you finish drinking. Let's save our game. After maze. Okay. What do we need to do? Um... Hmm. Look at improbability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label, which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push switch. This happens. Look at switch. There's nothing special about the generator switch. Push switch. It happens. What am I supposed to do now? Okay, the bridge, according to the IGN walkthrough, it says, after doing the scenarios, make sure you got the interface, the awl, and the chipper. Make sure that pocket fluff is in your gown or wherever you dropped it. Satchel fluff is on your satchel and jacket fluff is in your handbag. If these are not here, you'll have to do a scenario again, depending on what is missing. Then go down, AFT, and down. Okay, so we have to... We still have to get some stuff here. Inventory. You have no tea, an ultraplasmic vacuum awl, a thing your aunt gave you that you don't know what it is, a towel, a babel fish in your ear. Look. Bridge. This is the bridge of the house, the heart of gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. All right. Where's the pick? Do I have the pl fluff, fluff with me? Take gown. Taken. 
Wear gown. We're now wearing your gown. Okay, good. Save our progress. Bridge after maze. Take fluff. You feed a, feel a wave of depression sweep over, and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. And you have taken the fluff. Put fluff in pocket. Done. Mon wa Marvin wanders off. Save the game. Oh, that robot makes me depressed just being around him. Um. I have to find. I have to all. Let's look at all. Look at all. It looks like every other ultra plasmic vacuum all you've ever seen. So we've got that part. But what we need is a chipper. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Hello, this is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. You've been listening to Text Adventure Tuesdays. We've been playing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 1984 Infocom uh, game. It's a classic uh, text adventure game based on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy science fiction satire novel by Douglas Adams. 1984 by Infocom Incorporated. Walkthrough. I've been listening and reading the walkthrough by John Coxon, um, IGN, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Walkthrough. It has been a big help for me because if I didn't read that uh, tutorial, I'd probably have uh, a longer time and be delayed in giving you the adventure that I wanted to give you. But I had a good time. We made it through the war room and the maze. So I hope you had a good time with our adventure. We're going to continue on another episode of Text Adventure Tuesdays next Tuesday. So I hope you had a good time. Uh, part portions of this uh, audio will be shared on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Also, if you'd be so kind as to support and subscribe the work that I do on Anchor.fm, you can you can subscribe. It's also available on uh, on the website Spotify. You can check out the Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast on Spotify. So Video Gamers Oasis on Anchor.fm is the main source where you can get this podcast. Make sure to check out future episodes and also past episodes. I have some other older older games I've played. And I'm also going to be talking, I have talked about some geeky topics that are not exactly game related. But uh, you may find them interesting as well. Thanks for watching. Take care of each other. And we'll see you again. I'll have some more creative ideas for you in this week. So stay tuned for that as well. Until next time, have an awesome week and take care of each other and take care of yourselves. All the best. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Interactive Fiction Text Adventure Game First released in 1984 And we're playing this on Winfrots Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content 
for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. Hello, welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and it's that time again. It's Text Adventure Tuesday, where I get to read for your enjoyment me playing a classic retro text adventure game. And in this age of extremely highly uh, realistic graphics in video games, it's kind of refreshing to, to play some games, some video games that require the mind's eye. So these games that I've been playing, they really uh, help you or force you to use your imagination, your mind's eye. We've been playing the classic text adventure game version or adaptation of Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And what we're doing now is we're back on, on the the Heart of Gold, we're dividing the, the adventure, it's a pretty long adventure, we're dividing it up into morsels that are easier to digest. We came back, um, Arthur uh, recently has uh, was transported to an alien spaceship, he was able to calm the rage between two alien nations, and he also went inside a maze and explored his own brain and picked up his common sense. He's back after using the uh, improbability machine and he is uh, the, uh, he's going to, he's returned to the Heart of Gold to do some more adventuring. So I hope you have your your favorite cup of, of synthetic tea, your dressing gown, your towel, Babel fish uh, inserted directly into your ear and your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy snug, snugly uh, fit, fit under your armpit. We're ready to get on with our adventure, continuing our adventure on the Heart of Gold. So uh, let's we're back on the ship and I'm just looking at my inventory. You have no tea, an ultra plasmic vol- vacuum all, a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. A towel, a babel fish in your ear. All right. So let's look around. Um, look. Bridge. There, this is the bridge of the Heart of Gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in advanced T substitute. There is a spare improbability drive here. There is a handbag here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a pot pocket fluff here. There is an electronic sub ether signaling device here. There is a flathead screw- screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. Uh, take pocket fluff. Take it. Okay. Inventory. Inventory, you have no tea, pocket fluff, an ultra plasmic vacuum all, the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, a towel, a babel fish in your ear. So let's see what our next option will be. Look at spare improbability ability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch. 
a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plug into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push switch, like fog rolling in off the ocean, a shroud of blackness billows towards you. Unlike fog rolling in off the ocean, the blackness hits you like a 16 ton truck. Can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. You don't even know who you are, where you are, who you are, how you got there. According to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, text adventure game walkthrough from the IGN, when everything goes dark, after four turns, a sense will be missing. Type in this sense and a description of where you will. Oh, I get it. They will list a bunch of senses and the one that's missing for the one you would, you would choose. Then you are to type something to get out of the dark. All right, so sense, uh, feel. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, and you don't even know who you are. What's, le what's left? Uh, taste, see, taste, sight, hearing, feeling, taste, sight, hearing, feeling. That's four senses. The fifth, what's the fifth sense? Smell. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Smell darkness. It does smell a bit. There's something pungent waving under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You can make out a shadow moving in the dark. Okay, here we go. Look at shadow. Lair. This is the lair of the ravenous bug bladder beast of troll. There are exits east and southwest. The ravenous bug bladder beast of troll is here, looking particularly nasty and hungry. The beast whips its evil smelling tail away from your nose and bellows a brain shattering roar. By suddenly popping out of nowhere, you have disturbed its train of thought. However, since its train of thought was the usual one, and in fact, the only one it knows, which goes like this, it soon starts to chug along again. You notice the beast's Lazaro Zap eyes, its swivel sheer teeth, and its several dozen tungsten carbide vast pain claws forge in the sun furnaces of Zangrijad. It has skin like a motorway and breath like a 747. It advances on you and roars out a demand that you say your name. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Save the game. Say, I'm Arthur. The beast roars your name with relish and explains that once it has eaten you, your name will be added to its list of remembrance. All right, better save, better save ourselves, Arthur. Inventory. 
You have no tea and ultra plus plasmic vacuum all. A thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. A towel, a be able fish in your ear. Put on towel. You can't wear the towel. The beast is nearly upon you. Use towel. Towel. Put towel on head. The Put towel on head. The ravenous bug bladder beast of troll is completely bewildered. It is so dim, it thinks that if you can't see it, it can't see you. You have a few seconds before it realizes its mistake. North. You stumble in that direction, but you can't see where you're going. Or you wander around the circle. The beast is getting puzzled that something it can't see is stumbled, stumbling around its lair. Slowly, it dawns on the creature that someone is trying to make a fool of it. It starts to look for you again. Um, look. You see a towel. Um, take off towel. Take towel. East. This is the large go east beast outer lair. This is the large walled courtyard. Strewn about are a profusion of gnawed bones bleaching in the sun. In case the significance of these fails to strike you, there is also a sandstone memorial in the middle of the courtyard on which the beast has rough, roughly carved the names of all its victims. Some sharp stones lie near the exit to the west. Bellowing with rage, the beast charges after you. Say Say I'm Arthur The beast roars your name with relish and explains that once it has eaten you your name will be added to its list of rem remembrance Take towel you already have it. With a head-splitting roar, the ravenous bug ble bladder beast of troll charges towards you. Use towel. Wrap towel around head. Wrap towel around head. The ravenous bug bladder beast of troll is completely bewildered. It is so dim that it thinks if you can't see it, it can't see you. You have a few seconds before it realizes this mistake. Carve name on memorial. So this is a large walled courtyard strewn about our profusion of gnawed bones bleaching in the sun. In case the significance of these fail to strike you, there is also a sandstone memorial in the middle of the courtyard on which the beast has roughly carved the names of all its victims. Some sharp stones lie near the exit to the west. Take sharp stone. Taken. Carve name on memorial. Whose name? The beast name? Your aunt's name? One of the infinite unknowable names of Buddha? How about the name of Fred who runs, or rather ran, your local chip shop? At least that's a short name. You may have time to write it before the beast eats you. Write your name on memorial. Just as the beast is trying to work out where you disappeared to, it suddenly sees your name freshly carved on its memorial of remembrance. Mystery solved. It realizes it must have already eaten you in a fit of absent-mindedness. Its mind is very, very small and quite frequently absent. It decides to give up the rest of its afternoon to the twin arts of digestion and contemplation. It settles down for a snooze. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. Wrap the towel from your head. Beast's outer lair. This is a large walled courtyard. 
strewn about are a profusion of gnawed bones bleaching in the sun. In case the significance of these fails to strike you, there is also a sandstone memorial in the middle of the courtyard, on which the beast has roughly carved the names of all his victims. The beast is in the corner, sleeping peacefully. Footnote 5. Go west. Lair. Go south. Go, go southwest. Go southwest. Inner lair. This is the heart of the beast's lair. The only exit leads northeast. The skeleton of a dead beast hunter lies nearby, clutching something labeled Nutriment forward slash computer interface. Take Nutramat forward slash computer interface. Taken. Let's go. Wait. Wait. Time passes. Wait. Suddenly a team of frond Nerbdian beast hunters charges in, intent on catching the beast for their zoo. Mistaking you for the beast, they fire stun guns at you, wrap you in nets, and install you in a lovely little lair in the Fron Nerbdi National Zoo. Three months later, the error is discovered, but while your damaged suit is pending in the Fron Nerbdian courts, the planet is invaded by bureaucratic pirates from Palo Palodon 4. Impressed into bondage for a 16-year filing and sorting mission on the so-called basement world of Sporla in the lesser mag Elnanic cloud, you escape with the help of a tribe of nomadic asteroid painters. You develop a unique talent for asteroid painting, gaining considerable fame throughout the cloud. A nickel ore deluxe is commissioned by his royal gorpness Orb Jefelk, the ruler of the 900 worlds of Gorp. But while working on this new masterpiece, your asteroid slips into a small passing black hole. Everything becomes dark. Let's look. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you're not certain who you are. So I can't feel, can't see, can't hear, can't taste, can't see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. Um, we have tea. Tea. Oh, we have tea. You can't see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. You don't even know who you are. Taste, feel, hear. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There is an exit to port. Up, go up. EFT, entry, oh, we were lying about the exit to port. You emerge from a small doorway. Entry bay number two. Look, this is the entry bay for the heart of gold. A quarter lies EFT of here. EFT, quarter, four end. Up. We're back on the bridge. So save our game as Heart of Gold after Ravenous Bug Bladder Piece of Troll. Bridge. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in advanced tea substitute. There is a spare improbability drive here. There is a handbag here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a pocket, there is pocket fluff here. There is an electronic sub ethered signaling device here. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. So we've saved our game. 
and we'll take a little break from our adventure. That was really fun. Gamers, thanks for tuning in to watch me play the, te the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a text adventure game uh, based on the classic sci-fi novel by Douglas Adam. We were able to go through another uh, interdimensional adventure through the improbable drive and we survive an attack of a ravenous bug uh, ravenous bug bladder beast of troll I hope you had a good time watching me play and um, I'm certainly had it I'm, I've been having a good time playing this game I'm going to be going through some more short adventures in future episodes so stay tuned Inexplicably, Arthur takes no notice of the towel, which magnificently you are trying to return to him. Instead, he says, Ford, what about my home? You start guiltily. Does he actually know that the earth is about to be destroyed? You start to ask him, then stop. If he knows, what the zark is he doing lying here in the mud in front of? You look around. You notice the bulldozer properly for the first time. You notice Arthur's house. You notice the workman. The penny drops. His house is about to be demolished. You feel like a complete... What's the word? You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Video Gamers Oasis, playful podcast. Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. back at the game the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy infocom interactive fiction so let's look around we're back at the heart of gold after the ravenous bug bladder beast of trawl we're back at on the ship let's look around the ship bridge this is the bridge of the heart of gold a gangway leads down and steam comes from an entrance to port next to the control console is eddie the shipboard computer there is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in advanced tea substitute. There is a spare improbability drive here. There is a handbag here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a pocket fluff here. There is an electronic sub ether signaling device here. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. Let's look at gown. Dressing gown is faded and battered. 
and is clearly a garment which has seen better decades. It has a pocket which is open and a small loop at the back of the collar. Put on gown, take gown, not holding the gown, now take the gown, taken. Put on gown, you are now wearing the, your gown. Let's look back, let's go back to the improbability drive because we still have to pick up some items on some, inter, some interdimensional adventures here, on some places we have to travel. So let's look at spare improbability drive. Spare imp let's spell that correctly, improbability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads, another fine product of this serious cybernetics corporation. Let's push the switch. Push switch. Push switch. A mist spins around your head. You fall into what seems like a bottomless pit. Suddenly you hit the bottom so hard that you wish it had been bottomless. Dark. Now, now I remember what we did last time, but we had to uh, try the different senses. Which one was missing was the one we do, must do. So look. There is nothing you can taste. Nothing you can see. Nothing you can hear. Nothing you can feel. Nothing you can smell. And you do not even know who you are. Listen to darkness. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything, and you don't even know where you are, where you are, or who you are, and how you got there. Let's look. Uh, feel. Darkness. You can hear, you can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, nothing. You're not even certain who you are. Uh, can you feel? Can you even smell? Smell. You can hear nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even certain who you are. So what's missing? We have no hearing. We have no taste. We have no sight. We have no feeling, but we have smell. Smell smell darkness it does smell a bit there's something pungent being waved under your nose your head begins to clear you can make out a shadow moving in the dark aha look at shadow Vogon hold along one wall is a tail tall dispensing machine in the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard a pair of Vogon guards stand nearby waving acid smelling stun guns an inch away from your face. Simultaneously, they fire. Everything becomes dark. Well, wow, that was weird. Uh, what am I supposed to do with that? All right, let's see if we can save our progress just in case we need to retrieve our file. We're still in the heart of gold. We're back on the heart of gold, but we're changing the date to 23rd. 0223rd, that's it. All right, let's see if uh, the IGN walkthrough of the game can help us because we're a little bit stuck right now. This is this is one of the strange journeys we make on the probability drive. The scenario you go to now could be one of the five below at, at random. After you have done one, get out of the dark, then go back to the bridge and drop any items you got, you get. Press the switch again and go to the more scenarios until you have visited all five. You may even come back to a scenario again occasionally. If you have completed it, everything will go dark as soon as you get there. If you haven't, you'll need you'll need to go do the scenario. An exception to this is Earth as Ford. Either do the scenario again or just wait until everything goes dark. You will know if you have completed it because there will be a be fluff on Ford's satchel on the bridge. An important scenario to which this is an exception is the war chamber maze. If you travel there a second here a second time, you explode and splatter yourself all over the bulkheads. You can stop yourself going to the war chamber or maze by not 
typing anything into the game which the game doesn't understand and therefore never getting the careless cost talk careless talk costs lies passage <clears throat> as detailed in Vogon ship if you get real tea before getting the careless talk costs lies passage you can control the scenario and visit it and not go to the war chamber maze twice for more information see the section on on dark however while playing through the game in order to compile the items lists I got, I got real tea after doing trawl which was my first scenario when I put dangly bit in tea the game brought up the careless talk cost lies passage about three or four turns later. This suggests to me that if, if you haven't got the careless talk cost lies passage before getting real tea, then the game will bring it up so you can actually visit the war chamber and then the maze. So we need to go back to the probability drive. We first have to drop all our items. Inventory. You have no tea. Drop tea. Drop complete now. It's pull yourself together. Uh, um, you have. How do I drop? How do I drop an item again? There's a way to drop the item. Drop, paint, chipper. Dropped. Drop, Nutra mat. Computer interface. Dropped. Don't drop the towel. Keep the towel. Drop. Ultra Plasmic Vacuum All Dropped And Inventory You have no tea, a towel, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is A babel fish in your ear Let's save our progress So this may have been one of the reasons why I had problems uh, Traveling in the probability drive Look at improbability drive. The spare and probability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push switch. A mist spins around your head. You fall into what seems like a bottomless pit. Suddenly you hit the bottom so hard that you wish it had been bottomless dark look you can see nothing feel nothing hear nothing taste nothing smell nothing and you're not certain entirely certain who you are how about feel feel you can hear nothing smell nothing taste nothing see nothing feel nothing you're not certain who you are let's uh, smell you can hear nothing smell nothing taste nothing see nothing feel nothing you're not certain who you are how about taste? You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, and you're not certain who you are. Okay, we have hearing, smelling, tasting, seeing. We don't have feeling. Feel. It does feel a bit cold and wet and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. Look at liquid. It seems coldish. smell liquid it smells just like liquid taste liquid uh, taste liquid it tastes just like wine in fact you realize with growing embarrassment that your hand is sitting in a glass of white wine you're at a party being given by a distant and incredibly boring acquaintance among the people you've been introduced to are a shy mousy fellow from the West Country named Arthur and a flamboyant guy named Phil. You've had too many drinks already and the room is beginning to buzz. Living room. You are in a large living room. There is a party going on. Other rooms lie in the west and southwest and the apartment's front door is south of here. Phil is here. Arthur Dent is here. There is a jacket fluff here. The hostess, a lethally dull woman, corners you and bores you to death. Literally, everything becomes dark. Ah.
Hello there, this is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, representing VideoGamersOasis.com. Welcome back to another episode of Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Text Adventure Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, make it a habit to play like an hour. It's been a, it started off with a half hour, moving on to an hour long uh, text adventure gaming. Uh, they actually, these games that I've been playing actually take a long time to play. So this this really fills up the uh, the hour spot. I don't usually do an hour long podcast, but because of this text adventure games, they've been so long. We've been playing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the classic 1984 text adventure game based on uh, Douglas Adams' uh, classic sci-fi satirical novel of the same name, and we're continuing on where we left off. Just so you know, uh, this this audio uh, will be uh, partially shared on my YouTube channel, VideoGamersOasis.com. Uh, Video Gamers Oasis on YouTube. Uh, subscribe and click the notification bell. But only a portion will be uh, shared because I want to get more uh, listeners to subscribe to my Anchor.fm podcast, which is also available on Spotify. There's some links and bo- links below where you can subscribe. Would really appreciate the support. Thank you so much for listening. Let's get on with the game, shall we? We're continuing on our adventure with Arthur. Arthur Dent, exploring the uh, improbability machine on the uh, heart of gold that he, him, him and his buddy uh, Ford have been rescued on. He's experimenting the improbability machine that teleports into various time, times and locations and universes perhaps even as well. And he, uh, recently he was uh, playing the role of Trillium. Um, a girl that he knew in the past on Earth, and he was actually becoming her temporarily, living in her shoes uh, at a party where she eventually gets uh, seduced by the mysterious Zepha Beeblebrox. And she basically rides on his motorcycle or scooter and fly and drive with this uh, very. Um, swinging uh, individual who turns out to be a uh, high-ranking extraterrestrial who is uh, captaining the Heart of Gold. So let's get on with the game. You're going to look around and see what we can do next. We just came out of that scenario, so we're going to look, look, look. Bridge. This is the bridge of the Heart of Gold. A gangway leads down and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There is a handbag here. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in advanced tea substitute. There is a spare improbability drive here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. Your gown is here. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a pocket fluff here. There is an electronic sub ether signaling device here. There is a flat head screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a satchel here. There is a molecular molecular hyperwave pincer here. Let's look at our inventory. You have in for inventory no tea, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is, a towel, a babel fish in your ear. Okay, let's um Let's look at spare him probability drive. Spare and probability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord 
plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads, Another fine product of the serious cybernetics corporation. I will sip my beverage. Let's see here. Push switch. The spare and probability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push switch, like fog rolling in off the ocean, a shroud of blackness billows toward you. Unlike fog rolling in off the ocean, the blackness hits you like a 16-ton truck. Look, dark, you can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. You do not even know where you are and who you are and how you got here, there, here, darkness. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you are not even certain who you are. What should I do? smell of darkness. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you are not entirely certain who you are. Touch. You can smell nothing, taste nothing, feel, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even certain who you are. Um, listen. The darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far below. There is an exit to port. All right, uh, port, can't go that way, exit. Can't see anything, smell anything, feel nothing, test. Okay, how about north? North, can't go that way, south, war chamber. Spread before you, astonishingly enough, is the war chamber of a star battle cruiser. Through the domed canopy of the ship, you can see a vast battle fleet flying in formation behind you through the black, glittering emptiness of space. Ahead is a star system, towards which you are hurtling at a ter terrifying speed. There is a, there is an extra, pardon me, there is an ultra-plasmic vacuum all here. Standing near you are two creatures who are gazing at the star system with terrible hatred in their eyes. One is wearing black jeweled battle shorts, and the other is wreathed in a cloud of green, sweet-smelling steam. They are engaged in conversation. The fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. Uh, look. War chamber. Uh, before, spread before you, astonishing left, is the war chamber of a star battle cruiser. Through the domed canopy of the ship, you can see a vast battle fleet flying in formation behind you through the black, glittering, emptiness of space. Ahead is a star system towards which you are hurtling at a terrifying speed. There is an ultra-plasmic vacuum all here. Standing near you see two creatures who are gazing at the star system with a terrible hatred in their eyes. One is wearing black jeweled battle shorts and the other is wreathed in a cloud of green. Sweet smelling steam. They are engaged in conversation. The fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. All right. What do we do? What do we do? Save the game. As um, Heart of Gold will date this game just in case we die. We can always retrieve our game. So we'll retrieve it as 9. Okay. Heart of Gold. And we will call it War Chamber. Save the game. In case we'll have, we have to retrieve our game. Uh, what do we do? I want, I want to try to remember what happened in this game. Hmm. 
look at ultra plasmic vacuum all. It looks like every other ultra plasmic vacuum all you've ever seen. The fleet continues to hurtle sunwards. Pick up ultra plasmic vacuum all. Taken. Uh, speak. Look at two. Look at creatures. Which creatures do you mean? The gu, the G, Guvant leader or the Verhurg leader? Um. Speak. Look at G. Guvant leader. Gugum leader is looking typically Gugavantish. Look at the leg, the hurg leader. It's looking typically Blahurgish. What am I supposed to do with these guys? I'm in the war chamber. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, do a little bit of cheating. I'm going to go into the IGN walkthrough of the game, and I'm gonna see what I can do with the war chamber. Okay, the war chamber. Get the all. Wait until you see the dog eating the sandwich you gave him earlier. If you don't, you'll have to give Arthur the sandwich as Ford, as Ford for him to give it to the dog. And then you'll be able to do this part. But if you did, after the dog eats the sandwich, you'll go to the maze. Um, can, uh, wait. And passes. Look. War chamber spread before you is the war chamber hurtling at a terrifying speed. Uh, standing before you, two creatures engage in a conversation. The fleet continues to hurl sunwards. Um, I'm supposed to wait. Get the all. Uh, let's look at the um, inventory. What's my inventory? You have no tea, an ultra plasmic vacuum all. A thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. A towel, a babel fish in your ear. All right, what am I supposed to do now? Wait until you see the dog eating the sandwich you gave him earlier. I'll just keep waiting, I guess. Wait. Right, time passes. Your simple act of kindness at a moment of great personal anxiety. You fed the dog, remember? Now brings rich rewards. The battle fleet plunges toward Earth and spots the dog, which appears to them as a gigantic monster, cheerfully tucking into a cheese sandwich. The Vlahergs and the Gagavans are moved by this simple picture of happiness, compared with the furious savagery of their own lives. They think back to a day when they used to relax over an odd cheese sandwich themselves. Often at sunset, often at sunset after a hearty day working in the fields back in Vlaherg and Govinia, and decided to return and rebuild their homes in a new spirit of harmony and cooperation. Grateful, they offer to drop you at the heart of gold on their way home. After a brief, time after a brief 900 parsec trip you are escorted into the transporter chamber of the warship the transporter glows and your surroundings change maze this is part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses all alike
Okay, so what next do I need to do? the war chamber now we're in the maze Let's see here according to the IGN hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy walkthrough this is in fact your brain so don't leave anything in here here walk around until you find a particle take the particle which is in fact your common sense and everything will go dark all right, we have to find the particle. The spongy gray. Let's look. Spongy gray maze full of twisty synapses. Look. Maze. This is a part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses, all lot, all alike. Um, north. Maze. This is part of a spongy gray maze of twisted little synapses all alike. Look around. Uh, look at spongy gray maze. Look at maze. maze. This is part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses all alike. Go left. Go, I misspelled left. Go left. I don't know the word left. Uh, move. What do you want to move? Um, forward. <laughs> I don't know the word forward. Um, look. Um, north. An electrical impulse across a synapse gap temporarily blocks your way. Okay, finally we're getting somewhere. Let's save this as maze. Maze. All right. Can I go south? It's part of a spongy gray maze full of twisted little synapses all like. Go east. It's part of a spongy gray maze of twisty little synapses all like. Blocking the gap between two synapses is a large black particle. There seem to be some faint markings on it. Let's look at large black particle. You look at the large black particle. As you look closer, you see inscribed in tiny letters of the, on the particle. Sense. Common for Dent. Arthur. For replacement. Order part number 31-541. Take particle. Take particle. Take particle. As you remove the particle, electrical impulses begin leaping madly across the new unblocked synaptic gap. Unfortunately, you were in the gap at the time. Everything becomes dark. All right, getting somewhere now. Save the game as maze, part of gold maze. Uh, Lux, look, dark. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you are not certain who you are. Listen, listen to darkness. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, 
not that you can feel, not that you can smell, you do not even know who you are. Feel. Darkness. You can f see nothing, feel nothing, uh, uh, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you you're tar not entirely certain who you are. Uh, smell. Darkness. You can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you're not certain who you are. How about taste? Darkness. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell, and you don't even know who you are. See. Darkness. You can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you're not certain who you are. Look. There's nothing you can taste, and nothing you can smell, or anything else. Uh, feel. Nothing. Stand up. You can't see anything, smell nothing, feel nothing, or taste nothing, anything, and you don't even know who you are and how you got here. Uh, AFK. Um, AFT. Supposed to do now. Wait. You can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, not certain, certain who you are. Listen. Okay, to darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There is an exit to port. Port. And go that way. Exit. Can't see anything. Um, up. Go up. And go the way north south we were lying about the exit to port you emerge from a small doorway entry bay number two look number two this is the entry bay for the heart of gold a quarter lies aft up here aft quarter for end corridor it's not a verb i can in that sentence up it's this this there is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here this is on the bridge lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive the plotter's long dangly bit is submerged in advanced tea substitute there is a spare improbability drive okay let's see if i can save the game here back on the bridge after maze. Okay, good. Uh, drink. Look at advanced tea substitute. Well, the only characteristic it shares with tea is that of a bro brownian motion. The long dangly bit is suspended in a cup of advanced tea substitute. Drink advanced tea substitute. You're not holding the cup. Pick up cup. Pick up tea. You're talking complete nonsense. Pull yourself together. Pick up Take advanced tea substitute. Taken. Drink advanced tea substitute. Drink advanced tea substitute. It tastes almost, but not quite, entirely like, like tea. It's absolutely disgusting. The cup itself vaporizes part of the galactic anti-litter program. Okay, well that is definitely efficient cup of tea that the cup actually dissolves or vaporizes in front of you after you finish drinking. Let's save our game. After maze. Okay. What do we need to do? Um... Hmm. Look at improbability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. 
It bears a small label, which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push switch. This happens. Look at switch. There's nothing special about the generator switch. Push switch. It happens. What am I supposed to do now? Okay, the bridge, according to the IGN walkthrough, it says, after doing the scenarios, make sure you got the interface, the awl, and the chipper. Make sure that pocket fluff is in your gown, or wherever you dropped it. Satchel fluff is on your satchel, and jacket fluff is in your handbag. If these are not here, you'll have to do a scenario again, depending on what is missing. Then go down, AFT, and down. Okay, so we have to... We still have to get some stuff here. Inventory. You have no tea, an ultraplasmic vacuum awl, a thing your aunt gave you that you don't know what it is, a towel, a babel fish in your ear. Look. Bridge, this is the bridge of the house, the heart of gold. A gangway leads down and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console's eddy, the shipboard computer. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare improbability drive. All right. Where's the pick? Do I have the pl fluff, fluff with me? Take gown. Taken. Wear gown. We're now wearing your gown. Okay, good. Let's save our progress. Bridge after maze. Take fluff. You feel a, feel a wave of depression sweep over, and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. And you have taken the fluff. Put fluff in pocket. Done. Mon Wa Marvin wanders off. Save the game. Oh, that robot makes me depressed just being around him. Um. I have to find. I have to all. Let's look at all. Look at all. It looks like every other ultra plasmic vacuum all you've ever seen. So we've got that part, but what we need is a chipper. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. You do not even know who you are and how you got there. Smell. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell, and there's not certain who you are. Um, taste. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not certain who you are. Uh, feel. You can smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not certain who you are. We're missing, we got smelling, taste, seeing, feeling, taste, seeing, listen, listen. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There is an exit to port, AFT. We're in exit entry bay number two, AFT. For again, go up. We're back on the bridge. Let's save our progress. I think I know what's. I think what we're doing. We forgot to drop the advanced tea substitute. Look, uh, inventory. You have no tea. 
a towel, a thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, and be able to fish your gear. Let's just double check to see what we need. We need some kind of item to be on our journey. Drop the carton and the tea substitute and put the long dangly bit into the tea substitute. Press the switch and everything will go. This will change according to which random so you'll need to visit. The Drop the dry pillars and rasps and put the small plug into the small receptacle. We need to know exactly what we, uh, what's our goal here, what items we need to pick up. So we, last time we picked up, we didn't pick up the small, small sharp stone. We got the Nutramat computer interface. We got the Ultra Plus all common sense particle. Oh, we did. We drank the liquid last time in the dark. You may have noticed that when you get T and press the switch, there is a sense missing straight away. In fact, every time you wait, you, the sense missing changes. In this way, you can control dark. It makes sense to get T as soon as possible. So let's get the T. Take advanced T substitute. Taken. Let's go look at the inventory. You have no tea, you have advanced tea substitute, a towel, a thing your aunt gives you, gave you that you do not want to know what it is. We, just st we still don't have the tea though. Drop advanced tea substitute. Dropped. Save our progress. Inventory. You have a towel, no tea, drop thing. Drop thing, it falls to the ground with a light thunk. It doesn't do anything else at all. Save our progress. So maybe that will help. Let's look at our inventory. You have no tea, a towel, and a babel fish in your ear. Look at spare improbability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Push, push, switch. Like fog rolling in off the ocean, a shroud of blackness bellows towards you. Unlike fall, fog rolling in off the ocean, the blackness hits you like a 16 ton truck. Dark. Look. You can't hear anything you see anything smell anything feel anything or taste anything you don't even know who you are or how you got there that's smell darkness you can see you can hear nothing smell nothing taste nothing see nothing feel nothing and you're not certain who you are feel you can't hear anything see anything smell anything feel anything or taste anything you're not sure how you got there oh, that's a good taste you can't hear anything, smell anything. Can't hear anything, can't smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. And you're not sure who, do not even know who, where you are, who you are, and how you got there. You can't hear anything, smell, feel, or taste. Look. Look. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can, nothing you can taste, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. We have ta we have no taste. We have no hearing. Nothing you can feel. You can smell. See darkness. You see a painfully bright light that stabs at the front of your eyes. Finally, we got something uh, to look at. Look at bright light. Look at bright light. The light revol resolves itself into the bright yellow sun of Earth. You are hurrying up a country lane. The sky is light and clear, but you keep glancing at it with appre apprehension because you know that it will shortly be torn apart by Vogon ships and that the hills and trees around you will just burn up and blow away. And you hope there's time for a quick drink beforehand. You want to hitch a ride aboard the Vogon fleet, but are anxious because it's so long since you were th through a matter transference beam. Country Lane. The road runs from Arthur's home to the north, toward the village pub to the west. Let's save our progress. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
interactive fiction text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. All right, so we are we're in the country lane, right? The country lane, and uh, this is uh, this is the alternate reality. Uh, you're in on Earth, back on Earth as Ford. So what we need to do is. A, a, a road runs from north, um, Arthur's home to the north. So we need to go north, go north, go north, front of house. Before you is the house of your friend, Arthur Dent, who is lying in front of a bulldozer. You have no idea why. You have no idea about most things about Arthur, even why you regard him as a friend. But you do and must therefore return his towel before you leave. Nearby stands an impatient man. There seems to be a bit of an atmosphere. Open satchel. Opening the satchel reveals Sangtragonian mineral water, water, a towel, a hitchhiker's guide, an electronic sub ether signaling device, and a sa and satchel fluff. Take fluff. Taken. Take towel. Taken. Take device. Taken. Give towel to Arthur. Inexplicably, Arthur takes no notice of the towel, which magnificently you are trying to return to him. Instead, he says, Ford, what about my home? You start guiltily. Does he actually know that the earth is about to be destroyed? You start to ask him, then stop. If he knows, what the zark is he doing lying here in the mud in front of. You look around. You notice the bulldozer properly for the first time. You notice Arthur's house. You notice the workman. The penny drops. His house is about to be demolished. You feel like a complete, what's the word? Save our progress as Earth as Ford. Please consult your manual for the correct way to talk to characters. Go to Prosser and ask him to lie down. Look at Prosser. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Tell Prosser to lay down. Tell Prosser to lay down. Prosser can't hear you from here. Talk to Prosser. Prosser can't hear you from here. Go to Prosser. Go to Pros Prosser. You walk around the bulldozer. Prosser is standing here, looking cross and frustrated. Realizing that you are a friend of Arthur's, he starts to talk, to you, talk at you. He says that this sort of protest is all very well. But what Mr. Dent must realize is that he's had plenty of time to make a formal protest at the proper time and place and that's spending months going through the appropriate official channels, filling in the appropriate official forms, and going to the appropriate official public hearings is the right way of going about it. And lying around whimsically in the mud is not. He says that he personally hates mud and despises the sort of people who lie in it. Tell Prosser to lie down. I don't understand. What are you referring to? Talk to Prosser. Hmm, Mr. Prosser looks at you expectantly as if you seem to be about to talk. Tell Prosser to lie, lay down. I don't understand what you're referring to. Inventory. You have an electronic sub a towel. Okay, give, give towel to Arthur. Politely, Arthur Dent refuses your, off your offer. Uh, um, talk, talk to uh, Prosser. Hmm, Mr. Prosser looks at you expectantly as if you seem to be about to talk. How do you talk again? Ask 
Prosser to lay down, lie down. Ask Prosser to lie down. Prosser blinks in astonishment. You mean go and lie in the mud in his place? You explain that Arthur will only move if someone else takes over for him. Prosser shakes his head in such a manner as to suggest that he is very weary of the world, and you actually forbear from mentioning that it won't be troubling him much longer. Reluctantly, he follows you back toward Arthur. Arthur. You rapidly conclude the business. Prosser lies in the mud. Arthur, bewildered, nevertheless stands up and appears ready to follow you to the pub. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. to go west go west go west you can't go that way you can't go west when Arthur gets up go south then go west okay first go south go south go south country lane Arthur follows you go go west Pub. There is a barman sit serving at the bar. Behind the bar is a shelf. It is full of these sort of items you find on shelves behind bars in pubs. Arthur follows you. Buy peanuts. You buy some peanuts, which you'll need to replace protein loss from the matter transference beam. A tip you picked up from the Hitchhiker's Guide. Buy sandwich. You can't see any sandwiches here. Look at bar. There's nothing at the bar. Look at shelf. On the shelf behind the bar is the usual array of bottles, glasses, and soggy beer mats. Look at barman. You see nothing special about the barman. Buy beer. You order six pints of bitter. Three for you, three for Arthur. According to the Hitchhiker's Guide, this should cushion your system against the coming shock of the matter transference beam. As you drink the first pint, you mention to Arthur that you are from a distant planet, from a different planet, but it makes little impression. This surprises you because you thought it was the sort of thing that would interest people. Same as here. Save our progress there. Drink two beers. Drink two. I don't know the word two. T W O. Drink two beers. As you drink this first pint, you mentioned the Arthur. Drink second pint. You can't see a second pint here. Drink beer. It goes down well. At least they managed to get something right on this benighted planet. You decide it's time to tell Arthur that the world is about to end. You tell him. Arthur is completely unperturbed. Curious, you wonder what sort of news it would take to disturb him. Let's drink beer. Another beer. Drink beer. Drink beer. It goes down well. You hear a muffled crash. It's probably Arthur's little house getting knocked down. Would you tell him? This does upset him, and he tears out the door. Through the window, you see him running up the lane. A small dog chases after him, yapping, and he throws it a, a cheese sandwich. The dog devours the sandwich with passion and ignores a passing microscopic space fleet. You want to go east first. Go east. Country lane, you run up the lane after Arthur. You pass a serene dog. Fate cannot harm him. He has dined today. Go north. Front of house. Arthur Dent is here. 
Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing at the side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Drop satchel. Well, look at Arthur Dent first. Arthur Dent. Look at Arthur Dent. You see nothing special about Arthur Dent. Um, look at Arthur. You look at Arthur, you see nothing special about Arthur Dent. Right on schedule, according to the news you picked up last night on your sub Ethan Sensomatic, a huge fleet of Vogon constructor ships hurdles noisily through the sky. Time is very, very short. Storms break in the wake of the ships. The wind whips at you and makes it difficult to stand. You grab hold of a tree. Drop satchel. Drop satchel. The vast yellow ships thunder across the sky, spreading waves of terror and panic in their wake. The voice of the Vogon captain slams across the country, insisting that the planning charts and demolition orders have been available at the local planning office in Alpha Centauri for 50 years, and it's too late to start making a fuss about it now. The electronic sub ether signaling device in your hand begins to whine. Lights pulsate across its surface. You fumble with the thumb as you hold on to the tree against the fierce wind. It falls to the ground near Arthur's feet. Arthur is struggling desperately towards you. The end of this planet is now only seconds away. Put Fluff on Satchel. Okay, Satchel Fluff is now sitting on this. Satchel Fluff is now sitting on the satchel. Fierce gales whip across the land, and thunder bangs continuously through the air in the wake of the giant ships. You struggle to reach the thumb, but the wind is too fierce and you are driven back. Fortunately, at this point, Arthur picks up the thumb and somehow manages to push the right button. However, often you do it, you are still stunned by the shock of dematerialization. The scene around is ripped away like a flimsy black back cloth. Everything becomes dark. So let's look at where we are. Save our progress. Pass forward. We got our mission accomplished in this one here. Let's look. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, taste anything. You don't even know where you are or how you got there. Listen. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. Listen to darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There is an exit to port. EFT. Entry bay number two. EFT. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. Look at Marvin. You see nothing special about Marvin. Marvin wanders off. <laughs> Depressant what robot. Um, EFT. Marvin enters a room to port and the door closes behind him. Say hi to Marvin. Talk to Marvin. to Marvin. Um, go on. AFT. In your room. Go up. Um, AFT. North. AFT end. In your room. Go up. Four quarter after end. Go up. Go up way. EFT. Go. Up. 
the end of a short corridor that continues four along the main deck of the Heart of Gold. Doorways lead AFT and, and port. In addition, a gangway leads downward. Four. Quarter four end. Go up. Back on the bridge. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, inventory. You have no tea, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is, a towel, a babel fish in your ear. ground with a light thunk. It doesn't do anything else at all. Let's save our progress as save game as heart of gold after after earth as Ford. There we have it, another uh, adventure with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure game. I'm Jeremy. We just finished uh, we just finished one of these adventures. They're called uh, Random Scenarios with the Improbability Drive on the Heart of Gold. We experienced life as Ford on Earth before Earth was zapped by the Vogons. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed your uh, our little session together. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. Video Gamers Oasis. Playful podcast. Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Win Frots. We're back on the on the heart of gold in the game the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, text adventure game based on the classic uh, sci-fi 
comedy novel by Douglas Adams. If you've been following the adventure so far, we just got back from an improbability generator uh, adventure. We, uh, Arthur uh, took the role role of his friend Ford back on Earth and, and basically did everything that was experienced by Arthur. Um, this time he was able to see <clears throat> what it would be like to be Ford being uh, beaming up onto the Vogon ship after the Earth is destroyed by the Vogons. So we're back on the Heart of Gold and what we're doing we're looking at at the bridge <clears throat> just want to make sure we have everything that we need so far bridge this is the bridge at the heart of gold a gangway leads down and steam comes from an entrance to port next to the control console is Eddie the shipboard computer there is a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is here <clears throat> there is a copy of the hitchhikers guide to the galaxy here there is an electronic sub ether signaling device here. There is a satchel here. Sitting on top of it is satchel fluff. That is exactly what I did uh, as Ford on the improbability drive uh, adventure last week. We, uh, when I was uh, being about to be beamed up onto the Vogon ship, I put the fluff onto the satchel. So let's look, look at fluff. Look at satchel fluff you can't see any satchel fluff here <clears throat> look at fluff you see nothing special about the pocket fluff take fluff take it you feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into your into the room whenever he comes into the room Marvin the par paranoid Android always uh, gets me down all right so <clears throat> let's look at um, we're gonna look at look at sales brochure just out of curiosity brochure you see nothing spe special about the sales brochure read sales brochure Read sales brochure, taking the sales brochure first. Equipped with a sensational breakthrough in improbability physics, the heart of gold will make you the envy of every major government. When the ship's infinite prob improbability drive is activated, the heart of gold passes through every point in the universe simultaneously, making travel to any single location a breeze. The sales brochure goes on to describe the ship's complement of Sirius Cybernetics Corporation designed Robots and computers, all equipped with GPP. Genuine people personalities. <clears throat> that would include Marvin the Paranoid Android. So let's look again. Let's look at the... <clears throat> look at spare improbability drive. The spare improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label, which reads, another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. <clears throat> so let's push the switch, push switch of the improbability drive. Let's go on another bizarre adventure. Push switch, you are disoriented. Blackness swims towards you like a shoal of eels who have just seen something that eels like a lot. <clears throat> Dark. Look. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you're not entirely cer certain who you are. Let's listen. <clears throat> listen to darkness. You can see nothing. Feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you're not certain who you are and where you are. Uh, taste. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. Uh, let's um, smell. Smell darkness. You can't hear anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything, and you do not even know where you are, who you are, and how you got there. So we have 
we already looked at hearing, hear anything, smell, hearing, smell, feeling, taste. What's left? We have, oh, we're, we're missing look. Look, look dark. You can hear nothing. <clears throat> you can hear nothing, smell nothing. Feel, taste, smell, no. hearing. <clears throat> Let's look. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, feel nothing, and you're not certain who you are. Feel, taste, smell. Look. I don't know what I'm doing, so it's supposed to be um, see. See darkness. You see a painfully bright light that stabs at the back of your eyes. <clears throat> look. You see nothing. Look. Okay. Uh, see. See pr painfully bright light that stabs at the back of your eyes. Look at bright light. <clears throat> All right. We're in a different location now. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing... The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. Look at bright light. The light resolves itself into the bright orange sun of Demogrand. The pain at the back of your eyes is from parting until very late last night, and both your heads are suffering the worst hangover you've ever experienced. You remember formulating a plan to steal the heart of gold, but you can't for the life of you remember any details. <coughs> Presidential speedboat in the pilot seat. You are piloting the speedboat, which features very simple controls toward the island of France. Footnote 3. Where the dedication ceremonies for the Heart of Gold will occur. You are currently steering the boat toward a narrow channel between towering cliffs and a rocky spire. There is a toolbox here outside the pilot's seat. Alright, so let's save our progress here. So we're on the presidential speedboat in the pilot's seat. You are piloting the speedboat, which features very simple controls toward the island of France, footnote 3, where the dedication ceremonies for the Heart of Gold will occur. You are currently steering the boat toward a narrow channel <clears throat> between towering cliffs and a rocky spire. There's a toolbox here. Presidential speedboat. This is according, This is 3.41 Damogran as they fought. This is the on the AIGN walkthrough. I'm just referring for help here. Presidential speedboat. In the pilot seat, get the toolbox, then search the seat, finding the key in the fluff. Now steer over the spire. Eventually the autopilot will kick in and you can activate it by pressing the button. Stand up after it has gone, it has, and go north. I would never have known that. Okay, that's what I should have done. Let's um, load the game again. Presidential speedboat, open. Look. Presidential speedboat. In the pilot seat, you are piloting the speedboat, which features very simple controls. Toward the island of France, footnote 3, where the dedication ceremonies for the Heart of Gold work will occur. You are currently steering the boat toward a narrow channel between towering cliffs and a rocky spire. There is a toolbox here, outside the pilot's seat. You continue to steer toward the narrow channel. Take toolbox taken you continue to steer toward the narrow channel let's save our progress heart of gold presidential speedboat all right I'm gonna search the seat search seat you discover and pick up a small key and a piece of fluff under the seat cushion you continue to steer toward the narrow channel save the progress 
residential speedboat. Now type in spear steer for the spire. That sentence um, isn't one I recognize. Steer. Where you want to steer at? Spire. The boat is now heading straight at the rocky spire. All right. Eventually the autopilot will kick in or you can activate it by pressing the button. Stand up after it has and go north. All right, press the button. Press the button. The button glows. An electronic eye stalk shoots up from the hood, looks around and withdraws. The light fades. You continue to steer toward the, the rocky spire. Let's see our progress here. The button glows. An electronic eye stalk shoots up from the hood, looks around and withdraws. The light fades. You continue to steer toward the rocky spire. Stand up. Stand up. You are now on your feet. You continue to steer toward the rocky spire. What am I doing now? North. You can't go that way. Suddenly the autopilot leaps to life, steering the book boat away from the rocky spire. The crowd gathered for the dedication oohs and ahs as the boat swerves through the narrow channel. As it reaches the base of the towering cliffs, a plume of water foams, forms under it, sending it higher and higher. The crowd bursts, bursts into applause as the boat reaches the top of the cliff just south of the ceremonial dais. Oh, good. Let's save our progress. Go north. Go north. As you step out of the boat, the plume of water lowers it away. The crowd, unaware of the autopilot, bursts into a round of admiring applause. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. Dias. Uh, this is a platform surrounded by a, by a crowd. Several members of the crowd are holding a huge banner. Just to the east is the Heart of Gold. <coughs> Say this as dice, dice. We gotta wait around till Trillion appears. Wait, wait. The crowd cheers wildly. It thinks you're terrific. Wait. The crowd cheers wildly. It thinks you're terrific. Let's look. This is a platform surrounded by a crowd. Several members of the crowd are holding a huge banner. Just to the east is the Heart of Gold. Wait. The crowd cheers wildly and thinks you're terrific. Wait. <clears throat> the crowd cheers wildly. It thinks you're terrific. Suddenly, Trillium leaps out of the crowd, grabs you by the necks, and points a blaster at your left hand. Guards rush up. Photon rifles poised to shoot. Stay back! Shouts Trillium. One more step and the president of the galaxy is fried meat. The guards seem unsure and look at you for instructions. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. <clears throat> All right, we're back and we're in a tight situation. 
We're playing the role of uh, Zephod at uh, Damagran in it, after during a, uh, a probability machine adventure. Arthur is is uh, Zephod for the time time being, and we have been uh, we just got uh, attacked or hijacked by Trillium, the the lady, the lady who uh, a former um, relationship of Arthur and she's at the boat and so what we're trying to do is trying to figure out what we need to do uh, in order to communicate with the guards and I just was referring to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy manual and something I didn't really take the time to read you know the saying goes when all else fails read the manual Communicating with hitchhikers. In hitchhikers, you type your command in plain English each time you see the prompt uh, greater than. The, or the right arrow. Hitchhikers, uh, right uh, brackets. Um, hitchhikers usually acts as if your commands begin with I want to although you shouldn't actually type those words. You can use the words like the if you want, and you can use capital letters if you want. Hitchhikers doesn't care either way. So what we need to do is get back to the game. Tell guards. Hmm, one of the guards looks at you expectantly as if you seem to be about to talk. Now what we need to tell the... Uh... Order the guards, we need to order the guards not to shoot or to drop their weapons. Drop your weapons, quotation marks. That was, there was no verb in that sentence. Don't shoot. There was no verb here in that sentence. Drop your guns. Don't shoot. There was no verb in that sentence. Help. Gotta figure out some phrases. How about say? Say, comma, oh, I think maybe that's what I have to type. <clears throat> say, drop your weapons. You must address one of the guards directly. Tell guard. Hmm, one of the guards looks at you expectantly as if you seem to be about to talk. Say, quotation marks, drop your weapons. Quotation mark. You must address one of the guards directly. Look at guard. They're holding photon rifles. Say to guards, drop your weapons. The guards hesitate, then toss their photon rifles into a pile in front of you. Now we're making progress here. Let's save progress as... Drop weapons. Grab gun. Look at photon rifles. You see nothing special about the photon rifle. Take photon rifle. A wisp of inkling of a thought penetrates the three-inch thickness of a solid bone surrounding the guards, very tiny brains, that something suspicious is going on. As you begin taking the rifles, so do several of the guards. They may be dim, but they don't know what to do with a photon rifle. Everything becomes dark. I didn't do something right. Uh, like, let's load the game. 
look. This is a platform surrounded by a crowd. Several members of the crowd are holding a huge banner. Just to the east is the Heart of Gold. Many of the disarmed guards are nervously eyeing you and Trillium, who is pointing a blaster at your head. There's a photon rifle here. Alright. One, two. Oh, I should have grabbed the gun. Ask Trillium. Trillian. Ask Trillian. What do we want? We want to talk to her. What do you want to ask Trillian about? Ask Trillian to shoot rifles. With a cloud of sparks, the pile of photon rifles disintegrates. The crowd cheers wildly. It thinks, you're terrific. Save the game as... You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing... The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. Electronic sub-ether signaling device here. 
There is a satchel here sitting atop it. It is satchel fluff. There is a handbag here. There is an ultra plasmic vacuum all here. There is a Nutramat computer interface here. There is a number 12 asteroid paint chipper here. Your gown is here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. And there you have it folks. That was uh, that's our adventure for tonight. We're going to save our game after the where we've had their adventure as as Zephod on the presidential speed boat and uh, on the dais. So, so we, we were able to experience what it was like for Zephod and Trillium to hijack the heart of gold. So we we're well, going to take a little adventure game on next Tuesday. Until next time. Bye. Last episode. Shoot weapons. All right, rifles. Go east. You and Trillian entered the heart of gold, that beautiful bauble you've been coveting ever since your decision to run for president of the galaxy. The excitement overwhelms you, or perhaps it's just the awesome hangover from last night. All right, we're back on the Heart of Gold after our adventure with Zephod Be as Zephod Beeble, Beeble Rocks on the heart, uh, entering the Heart of Gold with Trillium for the first time. That was a flashback uh, adventure last last episode. Now we're back on the Heart of Gold as Arthur again returning from uh, the darkness of the, the spare probability drive. Just wanted to give a quick note before we get on with our adventure. What happened recently, uh, just tonight, I was I discovered that I hadn't properly um, played the adventure as Ford uh, from the previous adventure when I was as Ford on Earth, uh, helping or rescuing Arthur from the Vogon attack. I was supposed to have the satchel fluff in Arthur's pocket. Well, I didn't have that, so I was going through some some paradoxes or some. I was kind of like tripping over uh, adventures, going through the same uh, adventure again and again, until I discovered back in the IGN, the IGN Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy walkthrough, that Arthur has to have the satchel fluff in the pocket or on the satchel. And there was a shortcut, or there's an alternate solution, um, according to Zephod Beeble Bruxel 1 um, on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy walkthrough on IGN. He said there's an alternate solution to getting the satchel fluff. Instead of placing the fluff on the satchel, you can simply give to Arthur, who, under the influence of the beers he drank, will take and stick it in his pocket. You will have it in your pocket when you become Arthur again. This is very crucial. I have to have the satchel in the pocket. So what I did is I, I went when I went on the um, improbability drive adventure again offline. It was off. It was not off the record. Not not being recorded. I was. I had to do the adventure all over again, which was a bit of a, a chore. But I was able to instead of putting the satchel fluff on my satchel as Ford, I gave the the satchel fluff after he had a few. Uh, Arthur had a few beers. Gave the satchel fluff to Arthur. He took the satchel fluff and put it in his pocket. So I'm so happy. Uh, I've got the satchel fluff in my pocket. I think I can progress now in the adventure. I can move on in this adventure now, and it's we're going to make some progress here. So let's look. All right, uh, look at spare improbability drive. All right, press switch. You are disoriented. Blackness swims around you like a shoal, shoal of eels who have just seen something that feels like dark. Let's listen. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. Uh, see. You can can't hear anything, see anything, smell, 
feel, or taste. How about taste? Can't uh, hear, uh, see, smell, feel, or taste. Um, how about uh, smell? You can't hear, smell, feel, or taste anything. But you do have... See. You, can see. you see a painfully bright light that stabs at the front of your eyes. Look at bright light. All the yellow sun of earth. You are hurrying up a country lane. The sky is light and clear, but you keep glancing at it with apprehension because you know that it will be shortly be torn apart by Vohan ships and that the hills and trees around you will just burn up and blow away. And you hope there's time for a quick drink beforehand. You want to hitch a ride aboard the Vogon fleet, but are anxious because it's so long since you were through a matter transference beam. Country Lane, the road runs from Arthur's home to the north, toward the village pub to the west. Suddenly a shadow passes in front of the sun. You look up, the shadow is a fleet of Vogon constructor ships. You fumble, fumble for your thumb. Before you can hitch a ride, the planet is destroyed. Everything becomes dark. So this adventure is an alternate reality, it's not the actual thing that happened. So it's dark again, let's look again. You can't hear, see, smell, feel, taste, uh, listen. You can't hear, see, smell, feel, or taste anything. Taste. You can't hear, smell, taste, see, nothing, feel, nothing. Uh, feel. You can smell, taste, see, feel. Uh, let's listen. You can deep, this, this hum of a star drive, EFT. Alright, EFT. Go up. We're back on the Heart of Gold, save our progress as uh, Ford takes Pocket Fluff and Pocket. That is progress right there. We got that mission completed the, the proper way. Look at spare improbability drive. Let's look uh, at switch. Press switch. Like fog rolling in off the ocean, a shroud of blackness billows towards you. Like fog rolling in off the ocean, the blackness hits you like a 16 ton truck. Dark. Uh, listen. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear, taste, or smell nothing. Smell. You can see, feel, hear, taste, smell nothing. Uh, feel. Nothing you taste, see, Hear nothing, feel or smell. Uh, listen. You can hear, smell, taste, see nothing. Um, hear, smell, taste. Um, we have listening. We have smelling. We have taste. We have seeing, but we don't have feeling. Feel. It does feel a bit cold and wet and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. Look at liquid. Uh, it seems coldish. Taste liquid. You are in a large living room and you're back on the party with Phil, Arthur Dent, and the Jack of Fluff. The hostess, a leafly dull woman, corners you and bores you to death. Literally, everything becomes dark. Uh, we've done that already. Look. Like your gown contains satchel fluff, a sales brochure, a maple fish in your ear. Uh, 
look at spare improbability drive. Press switch. Let's keep on entering, pushing that switch until I make some progress. You are disoriented. Blackness swims towards you like a shoal of eels. We have just seen something that yells like a lot. Dark. Look. Can't hear, see, smell, feel, or taste anything. Taste. Taste. Can see, feel, hear, taste, smell, nothing. Um, hear. Can hear nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. You can see, feel, hear, taste, smell. Um, Nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, feel nothing. So we have. Um, we go back to C again. C. I see a painfully bright light that stabs in the front of your eyes. Look at bright light. Country lane, the road runs from Darthur's house to the north toward the pub. The Vulcan constructor ship, ship everything becomes dark. listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Interactive Fiction Text Adventure Game first released in 1984 and we're playing this on Winfrots. Next, according to the IGM Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy walkthrough on IGM.com, it says here, oh, I'm not supposed to leave anything in the maze, which I don't think I did. Heart of Gold, Bridge. After doing the scenarios, make sure you've got the interface, the awl, and the chipper. All right, let's, let's, let's look at our inventory. Uh, inventory. No tea, a towel, your gown, being worn. Looks like your gown contains a satchel, fluff, sales brochure, Bible fish in your ear. Let's look around the bridge. Look at the bridge. Um, they said, according to the IGN uh, walkthrough, it says, make sure you got the interface. Take interface. Taken. All right, good. Um, let's save our progress as gold after scenarios because this is this is we're making progress we actually finished all the scenarios all right so after the scenarios what's what else do we need to pick up 
So we got the uh, interface, the all. Take, all, taken. And what else do we need? And the chipper. Take, chipper. Taken. Save our progress after scenarios. Make sure that pocket fluff is in your gown or where, wherever you dropped it. So it's inventory. You have no tea, a number 12 asteroid paint chipper, a ultra, an ultra plasmic vacuum hall, a nutrient board slash computer interface, a towel, your gown be worn, looks like your gown contains satchel fluff and a sales brochure and a Babel fish. All right, what's next? The jacket fluff is in the, or if you dropped it, satchel fluff is, is on the satchel. Okay, it's on the satchel. And jacket fluff is in the handbag. Oh my God, satchel fluff is on the satchel. Look at satchel. Satchel, which is closed, is fairly bulky. Look at satchel fluff. Satchel, I'm pretty sure. The satchel fluff is on the satchel, okay. Take satchel fluff. Taken. Put satchel fluff on satchel. Okay, satchel fluff is now, is now sitting on the satchel. That's important. It has to, we have to have that detail. Jacket fluff is on the handbag. Look at handbag. It's closed. Oh my gosh. Uh, inventory. You have no tea, a number uh, 12 number. Number 12 asteroid paint chipper, ultra plasmic vacuum all, a Nutrimat computer interface, a towel, your gown being worn, a sales brochure, brochure a Babel fish new year. What else do we need? We need jacket fluff. Is in the handbag. Is in the handbag. Look at handbag. Open, open handbag. Open the handbag reveals a pair of tweezers. Look at jacket fluff. You can't see any jacket fluff here. Okay, that's troublesome. That's troublesome. What we're missing here. Here, you'll have to do a scenario again depending on what is missing so we're, we're still missing the jacket fluff this uh, kind of sucks all right uh, look at spare improbability drive press switch all right uh, 
Shroud of Blackness, pillows towards you, hits you like a 60 ton trunk, dark. Uh, listen, that they can taste, see, hear, feel, or smell, smell. They can hear, see, smell, feel, or taste. Look, can't see anything. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear, taste, smell. smell a bit. There's something pungent waving under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You make up a shadow moving in the dark. Look at shadow. Oh man, the ravenous bug bladder beast of trolls here looking particularly nasty and hungry. We're back at the bug, uh, the bug bladder beast of troll. The beast whips its evil smelling tail away from your nose and bellows a brain shattering roar. By suddenly popping out of nowhere, you have disturbed its train of thought. However, the beast is beginning to get used to this sort of thing. Shrugs it off, it sinks tin or so if it's tungsten, tungsten carbide, carbide uh, vast pain claws into you. Everything becomes dark. Look, they see nothing. Uh, listen, it's hear, smell, taste, see, feel nothing. Feel, you can't hear, see, smell, feel, taste. Taste. You can smell, taste, see, feel. How about uh, listen? Doctors hear the distant promise of star drive, AFT. AFT. Go up. Alright, see your progress. We still have to. I'm missing something. I'm missing jacket fluff. fluff into the satchel into the bag. Take pocket fluff. Take pocket fluff. Take handbag. Take an open handbag. Jacket fluff. 
an OT, a handbag, it looks like a handbag contains a pair of tweezers, a number 12 Astro Bean Chipper, an Ultra Plasmic Locking All, a Nutramac computer interface, a towel, your gown being worn, it looks like your gown contains a pocket fluff, a sales brochure, and a Babel Fish New Year. Chipper, an ultra plasma vacuum all, a neutromatic forward slash computer interface, a towel, your gown being worn, it looks like your gown your gown contains pocket fluff and a babel fish in your ear. And according to the IGN walkthrough, after doing the scenarios, make sure you got the interface, the all, the chipper. Make sure that pocket fluff is in your gown, check, or wherever you dropped it. Satchel fluff is on the satchel. Let's double check there. Look at satchel. Satchel, which is closed, is fairly bulky. Sitting on top of it is Satchel Fluff. Check. We can check that off the list. So we've got the Satchel Fluff on the Satchel. We've got the Pocket Fluff in the pocket. And Jack of Fluff is in the handbag. If these are not here, you'll have to do a scenario deck again, depending on what is missing. So we didn't do that scenario. We're missing something. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Hi, this is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. This is Text Adventure Tuesday. You've been listening to Text Adventure Tuesday on uh, March the 9th, 2021. And I'm going to cut it short for tonight. I'm getting a little bit tired. Um, there, there's still some kinks I have to uh, to fix in this game. I think I'm missing the jacket fluff. I wasn't able to pick up the jacket fluff for some reason. Um, I'm going to tinker with this game offline and hopefully I should be able to progress in the game the way I should be for some reason I can't I can't retrieve the jacket fluff now even when I go back in time as Trillium so I'm going to do that offline and, and figure that out and I'll be able to move forward in the adventure in the meantime thanks so much for tuning in if you liked uh, if you liked uh, what you've heard so far so far it was not as exciting as my usual text adventure games uh, readings, but uh, at least you found some amusement out of it. Would you be so kind as to follow me on my Anchor.fm uh, channel uh, page of Video Gamers Oasis on Anchor.fm? Uh, just check out the Anchor.fm uh, link if you're on YouTube. Subscribe and click the notification bell on my on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis on, on YouTube. Check the other links below. And uh, yeah, I'm also on Spotify if you want to check out my podcast. I uh, promise I'll have more interesting content in the future. Right now I'm kind of like experimenting with different ideas. And it's taking, some, taking a little bit longer than I expected. I still have to do some resting and recharging my batteries. <laughs> Emotionally, physically, uh, mentally. But I promise when I get myself fully uh, up, 
uh, filled up, full of energy. I'm going to put a lot of more effort into the quality of these podcasts. Just right now, I'm kind of in a bit of a, in a twilight zone in my life. So I do appreciate your patience in this regard. Take care of each other and uh, take care of yourself. Make sure to, you know, if, you know like, I, like, I, like many people say to me and I like to say it myself, is that what good are you to other people if you are not taking good care of yourself? So take good care of yourself. Eat a lot of nutritious, healthy food. Drink a lot of fresh, pure water. Uh, take a break from the computer or the game and do some physical exercise. Get some fresh air outside and rest whenever your body craves rest give it rest and we'll see you again fresh excited and new on another episode of video gamers voices playful podcast and don't forget every tuesday is text adventure tuesday and i'm going to give you better quality yeah <laughs> reading game reading gameplays uh, text adventure games the features right now i'm kind of in a bit of a twilight zone in my life right now so i do appreciate your patience and consideration in my situation thanks so much and don't forget the Twitter, VJ underscore tweets, Facebook, Video Gamers Oasis, and Video Gamers Oasis on Twitter, on Instagram, and uh, YouTube is Video Gamers Oasis. Check out the links below. Thanks for watching. Take care of each other, and we'll see you again real soon. Till next time. Bye. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. Hello, welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and this is another episode of Tex Adventure Tuesdays. Actually, this is the 21st episode of the series so far, and this is going to be the season finale. So strap in your favorite couch or lazy boy chair, lazy girl chair, what do you want to call it? Lazy person chair with your favorite cup of real tea. In fact, get yourself a whole teacup of real tea and your favorite bowl of salty nut, beer nuts, or whatever uh, snack that you like to eat. This is going to be an extra long episode of uh, Text Adventure Tuesday. We are uh, making progress in our adventure game of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Infocom Interactive Fiction, a science fiction story. Copyright 1984 by Infocom Incorporated. All rights reserved. We had to, if you've been following my adventure so far, I've been having some problems previously because of the, uh, wasn't able to uh, progress because I didn't, uh, as when I traveled as Trillion, I was, ha I had to go uh, back in time to redo the adventures, including putting the jacket fluff into the handbag. Now I've, Offline, I did all the adventures off off the line. Didn't record, didn't broadcast. I got all the missions done correctly, and now we are ready to make progress. Um, tune in right after this uh, station identification. We're going to do a, a brief recap of all the adventures with the uh, the random scenarios that Arthur has to go using the improbability spare improbability drive. And after we go through all those. Uh, a brief recap of all, all those little mini adventures will progress back on the bridge of the heart of gold and Arthur is continuing to tinker with the uh, the Nutramat control panel with his toolbox various tools and uh, working on the ship he's uh, messing with Eddie the computer uh, the, comp uh, the uh, spaceship computer I hope you stay tuned for that adventure it's very delightfully wacky and fun right after the station identification. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. 
first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Win Frots. Here's a brief recap of the adventures so far. Look at Spare Improbability Drive. The Spare Improbability Drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plug into the atomic vector plotter. It bears a small label which reads, Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Press switch. You are disoriented. Blackness swims toward you like a shoal of eels, who have just seen something that eels like a lot. Darkness. You see a painfully bright light that stabs at the front of your eyes. Look at bright light. The light resolves itself into the bright yellow sun of Earth. You are hurrying up a country lane. The sky is light and clear, but you keep glancing at it with apprehension because you know that it will shortly be torn apart by Vogon ships and that the hills and trees around you will just burn up and blow away. And you hope there's time for a quick drink beforehand. You want to hitch a ride aboard the Vogon fleet, but are anxious because it's so long since you were through a matter transference beam. Country Lane. The road runs from Arthur's home to the north toward the village pub to the west. Look. Front of house. There is a huge pile of rubble to the north. A path leads around it to the north, east, and northwest, and a country lane is visible to the south. There is an electronic sub ether signaling device here. Arthur Dent is here. Mr. Prosser, from the local council, is standing at the side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Fierce gales whip across the land and thunder bangs continuously through the air in the wake of the giant ships. You struggle to reach the thumb, but the wind is too fierce and you are driven back. Fortunately, at this point, Arthur picks up the thumb and somehow manages to push the right button. However often you do it, you are still stunned by the shock of dematerialization. The scene around is ripped away like a flimsy back cloth. Everything becomes dark. From Paladon 4. Impressed into bondage for a 16-year filing and sorting mission on the so-called basement world of Sporla in the lesser Mag Mag Magellanic Cloud, you escape with the help of a tribe of nomadic asteroid painters. You develop a unique talent for asteroid painting, gaining considerable fame throughout the cloud. A nickel ore deluxe is commissioned by his royal gorpness Orb Jafelk, the ruler of the 900 worlds of Gorp. But while working on this new masterpiece, your asteroid slips into a small, passing black hole. Everything becomes dark. See, darkness. You see a painfully bright light that stabs at the back of your eyes. Look at bright light. The light resolves itself into the bright orange sun of Damogran. The pain at the back of your eyes is from parting until very late last night, last night, and both your heads are suffering the worst hangover you've ever experienced.
Gold. Many disarmed guards are nervously eyeing you in Chilean, who is pointing a blaster at your head. Go East. You and Chilean enter the heart of gold, that beautiful bauble you've been coveting ever since your decision to run for president of the galaxy. The excitement overwhelms you, or perhaps it's just the awesome hangover from last night. Everything becomes dark. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Okay, we're back on the Heart of Gold. We completed all the scenarios. Whew, man, you have no idea how much of a relief this is. I had to repeat the various scenarios several times and I, I messed up uh, our previous episode with Trillium. Uh, Trillium has four, or Ford has Trillium in the uh, party. I forgot to put the jacket fluff in the handbag and I had to redo many of the adventures that I've already recorded and broadcasted on my podcast so I had to do it offline so I finally got all those missions done I got all the items and I'm just referring I've been looking at the IGN walkthrough for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy just for some a little bit of tip from tips and tricks and it says here on the heart of gold um, after all the, the bridge after doing the scenarios make sure you got the interface the all and the chipper so let's see if we can um, Let's look at our uh, let's look at our inventory now, and let's get on with the uh, with the inventory. Let's get all those items that we need. Inventory. Inventory. You have no tea. Your gown. It looks like your gown contains pocket fluff, a towel. I think your aunt g- gave you, which you don't know what it is. A babel fish in your ear. Marvin wanders off. That's Marvin, the paranoid android. Uh, now we're just going to look up. We have to pick up the interface. Take interface. Taken. Let's check our inventory. All right, we have a Nutrimat forward slash computer interface. Excellent. So let's save our progress. As Heart of Gold after Zaphod updated. So let's save our progress. Then what we need after the, the interface, we need the all. So let's take all, type in take all, A-W-L that is, taken, inventory. Just double check we have it. We have the Nutrimat computer interface and the ultra plasmic vacuum all. Excellent, we've got that, that item. So let's save our progress. And then after that item, we need to get the chipper. So let's type in Take chipper. Taken. Inventory. A number 12 asteroid paint chipper. Save progress. Excellent, excellent. We've got those fundamental items. Or technological items, at least. They're not like pretty basic, They're pretty high tech. Uh, next on the list. Make sure that pocket fluff is in your gown, wherever you dropped it. Pocket fluff. Okay, so let's inventory. It looks like your gown contains pocket fluff. Excellent. A satchel fluff is is on the satchel. Look at satchel. The satchel, which is closed, is fairly bulky. Sitting on top of it, is satchel fluff excellent save the progress next on the list satchel fluff is on the satchel and jacket fluff is in the handbag let's in the handbag let's look at handbag look at handbag 
It looks like the handbag contains jacket fluff and a pair of tweezers. Excellent. Save the progress. Progress being made. We got those items. What's left on the item list? If these are not here, you'll have to do a scenario again depending on what is missing. Then go down. EFT and down. So let's go down. Go down. Quarter for N. AFT and then down. Down. Hatchway. You are at the bottom of a gangway. A hatch below you is closed. There is a small access space to starboard. There is a toolbox here. There is seat cushion fluff here. There is a small key here. Let's save our progress as hatchway. Heart of gold, hatchway. Just so we can keep track of where we are. Hatch, hatch, way. All right. So we need to take the toolbox, the seat fluff, and the small key. And if these aren't there, you need to go to Damogran on Zyphod again. Okay, go up. Okay, first of all, we need to take all the items here. Take, take toolbox. Take it. Take seat fluff. Taken. Take small key. Taken. Save. Excellent. Now go up, four, then up. So we need to go up, go up, quarter aft EFT in, four, and up. Bridge. Quick uh, progress here. There, uh, we're back on the bridge. So let's save this as bridge. Save. Bridge. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare probability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in an advanced tea substitute. There is a spare and probability drive here. There is a handbag here. It looks like the handbag contains jacket fluff and a pair of tweezers. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is an electronic sub etha signaling device here. There is a satchel here. Sitting on top of it is satchel fluff. A carton labeled Nutribat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. So let's save our progress so far. So what we need to do now, we need to drop the seat fluff, the key to the toolbox. So drop the seat fluff, first of all. Inventory. Seat cushion fluff. Drop seat cushion fluff dropped. Then what we need to do, key in the toolbox. Drop key. Drop toolbox. Both of them dropped. Take the interface. So let's save our progress. Take interface. You already you already have it. Inventory. So we have the Nutribat computer interface already. 
We don't need to take it once it's already taken. What's next? Now go down, then port. Go down, corridor forehand, port. Galley. Let's save our progress as galley. Alright, we're in the galley now. I'm kind of coasting through the adventure. I'm not going to take too much time of uh, fiddling with it. I want to really show people how to play this game properly. So, we're in the galley now. Open the Nutramat. Okay. Open Nutramat. Open the Nutramat reveals a circuit board. Oh, hey, they were getting nitty gritty now. Um, open the Nutramat, then remove the circuit board and put it in the interface. Okay. Remove circuit board. Remove circuit board. Taken. And put it in the interface. Put circuit board into. Put it into interface. You can't put the circuit board in a, in a, in a Nutramat computer interface. Oh, I'm not doing something right. Uh, open the Nutramat, then remove the circuit board and put in put in the Nutramat interface. Open the Nutramat. Put in the Nutrivate. Touch the pad and go starboard. Okay. Let's look at our, at our galley. galley. Galley, you are in the galley area of the ship containing a machine which is the state of the art in nutritional technology. A serious cybernetics corporation Nutrimat. There is an exit to starboard. Put, put circuit board into Nutramat. Let's look at cir circuit board. Look at circuit board. Look at circuit board. The circuit board is square, about 10 inches on each side. It has a number of microchips, some printed circuitry, and a message printed in microscopic letters. There are also eight dip switches, marked cholesterol register, MSG specifier, thiamine stack, piquant o mat, flavor dump, vitamin interrupts, nose sequencer, bouquet. Arbitration bus. Open the Nutramat. Uh, did I do something wrong? Um, so open Nutramat. It is already open. Look at Nutramat. Nutribat has a touch sensitive pad, a dispensing slot, and a service panel which is open. It bears a small label which reads an fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. So now what we need to do is open the Nutribat. Move the circuit board and put in the interface. Okay. 
put in the interface. We'll put, take the interface and put it in there. All right. Uh, inventory. All right. Where is the inv interface? A Nutrimet computer interface. Put interface into Nutrimat. Done. All right. We. <laughs> I was a little bit stuck there, folks. Sorry about that. I was not quite sure what I'm supposed to do, but I got got that figured out. So we got the. We put the interface into the Nutrimat, which is done. Touch the pad and go starboard. Uh, touch the pad. Look at pad. You see nothing special about the touch sensitive pad. Touch pad. The Nutrimat touchpad. The Nutrimat is puzzled that you want something made by pouring boiling water on dead leaves and squirting stuff from a cow in it and says that it will need some help from Eddie, the shipboard computer. The Nutrimat begins to whir. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. Save progress. Excellent. Excellent! We're making progress. Now what we need to do... Touch the bat and go starboard. Again, go up. Go... Go starboard. Forward or forehand, go up. We're back in the bridge. Same as bridge. Bridge. After. Nutramat. Save. What's next on our list here? Bridge. Drop the circuit board. Drop. Circuit. Board. Dropped. All right. Save our progress. And then what we need to do is. Any minute now, Eddie will announce that there are a couple of missiles approaching the ship. Don't panic. Just put the large plug into the large receptacle. Um, press the generator switch. Um, drop the drop the circuit board. Um, okay. Uh, let's look. The bridge of the heart of gold. Adds weight. Wait. Time passes. Announcement! Announcement! This is Eddie, the shipboard computer! Emergency situation! Nuclear missiles have just been launched at us from the approaching planet, which my data banks indicate is the legendary lost planet of Magraphia. I cannot perform evasive maneuvers because all circuits are currently engaged by the Nutrimat. The missiles will turn the ship into a huge atomic fireball in approximately eight turns. By the way, Somebody didn't finish their spinach at dinner. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. What do we need to do now? Any minute now, Eddie will announce that there are a couple of missiles approaching the ship. Ship, don't panic. Just put the large plug into the large receptacle. Let's look at our items. Look, a pair of hypersonic pliers. You hear the distant sounds of panic, shouts of anger, cries of alarm, pounding feet. Marvin wanders off. More. Um, where is... Um, what am I looking for? Put the large plug into the large receptacle. Take, take large plug. You can't. The large plug is an integral part of the spare improbability drive. You hear distant sounds of panic, shouts of anger, cries of alarm, pounding feet. Large plug. Um, don't panic. Just put the large plug into the large receptacle. Put large plug 
into large receptacle tackle put large plug into large receptacle plugged you hear distant sounds of panic, shouts of anger, cries of alarm, and pounding feet. Save our progress is announcement, announcement. Then press the generator switch. Press generator switch. As you flip the switch, sparks fly from the large receptacle. My new control console, weighs, wails Eddie, the shipboard computer. This is the thanks I get. The universe goes crazy for a moment. Announcement, announcement. This is Eddie, the shipboard computer. The missiles have turned into a sperm whale at an improbability factor of 2 to the 39,745th power to 2 to one against. The whale is currently plummeting toward the legendary lost planet of Magrathia. I hope this will teach you to listen to me when I say that legendary lost planets can be dangerous. I am proceeding with the preset landing instructions. Ford, Zaphod, and Trillian saunter on by on their way back to the sauna. Good work, kid, says Zaphod, slamming you on the back. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you, and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. I'd save our progress as announcement, announcement. Whew, that was a close call. Now we want to go down, then port. Go down. Port. Port Galley. It looks like the Nutrimat con contains a Nutrimat computer interface. It looks like the slot contains tea. All right. We have some real tea. Take the tea, then go starboard and up. All right. Take tea. No tea. Dropped. And we took the real tea. Uh, you feel a wave of depression sweep over. You turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. <laughs> Good old Marvin the depressed robot. Uh, let's see here. Hit the then go starboard and up. <sighs> go starboard. Go up. We're back on the bridge. Save our progress as back, back on bridge, back on bridge, um, after T. All right. Now what we need to do after that is that we're on the bridge, we need to drop the T. So drop T, drop T, no T, taken. That's how it works. So you, every time you, you drop T, you, you have no T. Every time you pick up T, you have no T dropped. Okay, that sounds like logic to me. Drop the T, then take the dangly bit out of the ATS and put it into the T. Okay. Uh, look at ATS. Look at ATS. About the only characteristic it shares with T is that of Brownian motion. The long dangly bit is suspended in the cup of advanced tea substitute. <sighs> Put dangly bit into tea. But the long dangly bit is already advanced tea substitute. Okay. Take the dangly bit out of the ATS and put it into the T. Take dangly bit 
out of advanced T substitute. The long daily bit is no longer suspended in advanced T substitute. Put put long dangly bit into T. Done. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. Save our progress after T. Okay, what do we do now? Drop the T, take the family bit into the T, put cup the device or the thing or the thing and press the generator switch. Pick up device. Taken. Alright, and now what we need to do is save our progress. Okay, um, pick up the T, pick up the device thing and press the generator switch. Look at generator switch. You see nothing special but the generator switch. Press switch. Which switch do you mean? The generator switch or the dip switch? Okay, okay. Press generator switch. Press generator switch. You are disoriented. Blackness swims toward you like a shoal of eels who have just seen something that eels like a lot. Dark. Okay. Let's save this as press press generator switch. Alright. Progress made. Right, now, now this will take you back to a random scenario, but now that you have T, you can choose which scenario you visit. Look at the sec section or on dark to find out how. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. Look. Look. You can't hear anything, see anything, feel anything, taste anything. You don't even know where you are or how you got there. You can't hear anything. You can't see anything. You can't feel anything or taste anything. Can't hear, see, feel, taste, smell. So dark. It does smell a, a bit. There's something pungent being waved under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You can make out a shadow look, moving in the dark. Look at shadow. Bogan Hall, long one wall is a tall dispensing machine. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. A pair of Vogon guards stand nearby, waving ass acrid smelling stun guns an inch away from your face. Simultaneously they fire, everything becomes dark. Look. Can't see anything, smell anything, feel anything, taste anything. Smell. Listen. Can't hear, see, smell, feel, or taste. Feel. You can't smell, taste, see, feel, nothing. Alright, um, listen. To darkness, you hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There's an exit to the port. FT, T. Uh, announcement, announcement. This is Eddie, one, the shipboard computer. We have just landed on the legendary lost planet of Bagrafia. I don't want anyone going outside until I've checked the atmosphere. Climatic conditions, existence of a dangerous wildlife, airborne diseases, volcanic activity, presence of real estate agents, and more than 8,000 other possible dangers. This routine check will take 14.9 years, and don't even think about leaving till I finish, because I'm jamming the hatch. Oh boy. Let's uh, save, as, save the game as Magagraphia. Magraphia. Let's type that in properly. Magraphia. And we will save the game and we'll call it a night. Let's uh, let's call it a night. Uh, that will be the game, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Watch, listen to me. Listen to a special uh, extended version. 
of the of our season uh, finale. <laughs> the 20, 21 episodes. I figured I'd c- c- stop it on twenty one, and perhaps move on. A, we'll start. Uh, We'll start the next uh, season, second season in springtime. We'll start it next week, March. Uh, that will be March. Uh, it's March 16th right now. We'll probably start March 23rd next Tuesday on Dix Avenger Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in, folks. I hope you had a good time. A really good, uh, at, at times uh, tedious, but other times very uh, delightfully uh, nutty and fun adventure. We'll continue on our adventures in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure game, Infocom, Infocom and Directive Fiction, a science fiction story, copyright 1984, by Infocom. All rights reserved. We'll continue on Magrathia, the planet. But until then, thanks for tuning in. I would appreciate if you would follow me um, on my uh, Anchor.fm podcast, Video Gamers Oasis. I'm working on getting more content, more interesting variety. Just right now, I'm kind of in a, in a transition in my life, so... Please be patient. I, I'll, I'll give you more content in the future, but right now I have to balance my life with other duties. So also this portions of this podcast will be uh, uploaded on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis on YouTube. Subscribe and click the notification bell. Take, check out my VideoGamersOasis.com website and blog. This will be shared on my website and blog as well as a entry into my podcast. Take care of each other. Take a break from the computer from time to time. Stretch your muscles, do some exercise, eat nutritious food, drink a lot of fresh, pure water. Take time to rest when your body craves rest. Take care of each other, and we will see you again real soon. Thank you for uh, tuning in to Text Adventure Tuesday on Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. Love you. Until next time. Bye. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Hello, welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. This is season two of our of a brand new season of Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and it is Text Adventure Tuesday. We're starting uh, our or continuing our adventure with the the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 1984 uh, Infocom Entertainment uh, Text Adventure game. We we've just uh, landed at Mount Graffia in the in the game, and we are going to uh, take our adventure into the belly of a sperm whale. I hope you'll join me with this fun adventure. Get your big steaming pot this time of hot tea, your teacup, your your babel babel fish in your right ear. Sit down in your favorite couch, your chair, or bed with your headphones on and listen to me as I read the adventure and dictate it to you. I hope you have a good time. Stay tuned right after the station identification. Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show.
You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Right, we're back on the Heart of Gold. It's March 23rd, 2021, and we're back on the Heart of Gold. Continue our adventure, season two of our Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast season. And we're going to continue on uh, our adventure of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So we're back on the Heart of Gold. Let's type in look, corridor, four end. This is one end of a short corridor that continues at AFT along the main deck of the Heart of Gold. Doorways lead to fore and port. In addition, a gangway leads upward. So we have to figure out what to do next. So. So we're still on the ship. We have all the items. Let's look at our inventory. Just check to see if we have everything we need. So, see if we need to go to the improbability generator again. Inventory. Look, there's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can smell, and you do not even know where you are. So, we're missing a sense right on the off the bat, which is great when you have the tea. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can smell. Listen. Listen to darkness. You can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. You're not even certain who you are, where. Uh, listen to darkness. You hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above, below. There is an exit to port. Uh, go to port. Or AFT. We were lying about exit to port. You emerge from a small doorway. There is a violent explosion around you, leaving you standing in the bridge. The walls, floor, and ceiling are covered with little pieces of flesh and bone. Apparently, you just materialized inside your own brain. This is very, very, very nasty. You have two choices. Right, quit now or experience this materialization from the other end in about five turns. Good. Well, um, uh, let's look. Um, let's load the game again. Open. Look. All right. Look at spare improbability drive. All right. Press switch. Um, let's generator switch or the dip switch. I'm not even sure what they mean by dip switch. Switch. I'm gonna to have to read the manual again. Maybe the manual can spare some, can spend, can uh, shed some light on this matter. Um,
to read that manual on, on the podcast from beginning to end tomorrow. I do have to just figure this out here. I think I'll have some more information online what I need to do. A checker's Guide to the Galaxy Walkthrough, Heart of Gold, Trillium Beast, Presidential Speedboat, Whale Stomach. Okay. Heart of Gold. Now you have completed these segments, you need to get the T. Your score should be 225. Let's check our score. This is on uh, www.thecomputershow.com. So if you're looking for this information, my score is 225. Excellent. Go to the Nutramat. Look at Nutramat. Open panel. Get board. Break board. Why not? Insert interface in Nutramat. Press pad. Wait until emergency. Exit up. Connect long cord to large receptacle. Press switch. You now have created the whale and flower pot. Ask guide about fluff for info. Go to the galley and get tea. Get toolbox, return bridge. Collect the four fluffs from the toolbox, handbag and gown. Drop all except gown, fluffs, towel, and tea, or you will lose it. Remove dangly from substitute. Put dangly in tea, press switch. Okay, I spent ages trying to work out how to, how to get here, but it seems somewhat random so try try again maybe you need to drop the T I don't know there seems to be a set of variable that needs to be fulfilled first perhaps possibly if you hit up you end up in the hold you are in the right track you need to try again otherwise try putting fluff in a pocket so let's look at our inventory um, cancel look um, uh, inventory your gown, look, your gown contains pocket fluff. Okay, that's good. So, get T, get toolbox, drop all and T. Remove dangly from substitute, put dangly in T. Okay, I think I get it now. Look at T. It looks like it has even more brownian, brownian mo motion than advanced T substitute. The long dangly bit is suspended in a cup of tea. Press switch. Which switch do you mean? The generator switch or the dip switch? Press dip switch. Switched. Is that going to work? Let's save our game as dip switch. Just in case I need to go back. see how we're doing here so far so good then what what it tells me to do all right let's uh, look look at spare improbability drive look at T looks like it has even more burning motion even more brownie in motion than advanced C substitute. The long dangly bit is suspended in the cup of tea. Look at spare improbability drive and press switch. Press generator switch. You are disoriented. Blackness swims around you like a shoal of eels who have just seen something that eels like a lot. Dark. Look. You can see nothing. See, feel, Taste, smell. See, how about listen? Listen. To darkness, you hear the deep and distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There is an exit to port. Exit. Or how about uh, EFT? EFT, go up. Uh, let's look. Uh, we're back on the bridge of Heart of Gold. Look at spare improbability. 
press switch. Which switch do you mean? The generator switch or dip switch? Press generator switch. You are disoriented. Blackness swims towards you like a shoal of eels who have just seen something that eels like a lot. Look dark. Look. You could feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. All right. Uh, here you can't hear. Okay. Feel, hear, taste, smell. Feel is feel here. Feel, hear, taste, smell. Taste, smell. See. See darkness. You see a painfully bright light that stabs at the front of your eyes. Look at bright light. The light resolves itself into the bright yellow sun of Earth. You are hurrying up a country lane. The sky is light and clear, but you keep glancing at it with apprehension because you know that it will shortly be torn apart by Vogon ships and that the hills and trees around you will just burn up and blow away. You hope there's time for a quick drink beforehand. You want to hitch a ride abo aboard the Vogon fleet, but are anxious because it's long since you were through a matter transference beam. Country Lane. The road runs from Arthur's home to the north toward the village pub to the west. Suddenly, a shadow passes in front of the sun. You look up. The shadow is a fleet of Vogon constructor ships. You fumble for your thumb, but before you can hitch a ride, the planet is destroyed. Everything becomes dark. Look. Nothing can taste, they can see, hear, feel, smell. Listen. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. Listen. Hear, feel, smell, feel, taste. Look. You can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. Listen. To darkness, you hear the deep distant hum of a star drive coming from far above. There's an exit at the port. AFT, AFT, go up. Alright, save our progress so far. Alright. Uh, let's, uh... Inventory. So we have the vacuum all. We have all that stuff. Uh, look at spare improbability drive. Press switch. Press generator switch. A mist spins around your head. You fall into what seems like a bottomless pit. Suddenly you hit the bottom so hard that you wish it had been bottomless. Bottomless. Dark. Look. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, feel nothing. You're not certain who you are or where you are. You can hear, smell, taste, feel. Look, dark, see. Uh, you can't see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. You can't feel, smell, listen. You hear the deep distance hum of a star drive. AFT, okay. We were lying about the exit to port. You emerged from a small doorway. There's a violent explosion around you, leaving you standing in the bridge. The walls, floor, and ceiling are covered with little pieces of flesh and bone. Apparently you just materialize inside your own brain. This is a very, very, very nasty. You have two choices. Quit now or experience the materialization from the other end in five turns. Let's look. Uh, look. 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 Alright, what? we just kept waiting and waiting. Um, the Arthur Dent of five turns ago suddenly materialized inside your, your brain. There's an incredibly nasty cracking, scrunching noise, and blood and bone fly everywhere at your head. To be perfectly frank about this, explodes. We did warn you, you have died. More. We are about to give you your score. Put on your peril sensitive sunglasses now. Hit return or enter when ready. Your score is 225 out of a possible full pull. 400. Not, not, do it, not too shabby. More than half percentage in 898 terms. Would you like to start over, restore a safe position, or end the session? Okay, restore. Uh, open. Look. All right, let's see if we can f get some more help from the internet, because I'm a bit stuck right now. Woo 
remove dangly from substitute, put dangly in T, press switch. Oh, what am I supposed to do here? You just have to keep trying, I guess. Inventory, look at T. The long dangly bit is suspended in the cup of tea. Look <coughs> at tea substitute. Well, the only characteristic that shares the tea is that of a Brownian motion. Look at spare improbability. Oh, I should drop the tea, maybe. I don't know. Drop tea. Should I keep the tea or drop the tea? I don't know. Let's uh, see if I can figure this out. If I keep the tea or drop the tea. <coughs> drop all except gown, fluffs, towel, and tea, or you will lose it. <coughs> dangly for some soup, but dangly and tea. Possibly if you end up in the hold, if we're in the right track. You just need to try again. Inventory. Um, oh, I didn't take the T. Uh, look at T. It looks like it has even more brownie motion than fancy substance. The long dagly bit is suspended in the cup of tea. Take tea. <clears throat> OT dropped. Inventory. You have tea. All right. That should make a difference. Maybe that's why it kept on exploding. Look at spare improbability drive. Press switch. Which switch do you mean? The generator switch or the dip switch? Press gener. Generator switch. <clears throat> a mist spins around your head. You fall into what seems like a bottomless pit. Suddenly you hit the bottom so hard that you wish it had been bottomless dark. Look. You can hear nothing. Smell, uh, smell, taste. Hear, smell, taste, and see. How about um, hear, smell, hear, smell, taste. How about feel? Feel. Feel darkness. It does feel a bit warm and wet and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. Okay. I think we're getting somewhere. Taste. Li uh, drink. Liquid. Inside the spur- Yuck! You are jerked to your senses by the realization that you're licking the lining of a whale's stomach! Yes! Yes, I finally made it. Let's save our game. We'll name our game Heart of Gold Inside. This is where I want to go. Inside the Sperm Whale. Finally. I was looking for that. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. Alright, I figured it out what I did wrong in my previous uh, sperm whale adventure. Well, it says here in, um, I'm looking at www.strategywiki.org or https colon forward slash forward slash strategywiki.org forward slash wiki and it says here in the sperm whale, it feel, of course this feels a bit warm, wet and squishy, you must be using the tea in order to reach this location. Feel, taste liquid, 
get flower pot, put flower pot in thing. Wait until the whale crashes to the ground. All items not carried in the gown or thing will be destroyed. The flower pot needs four pieces of fluff obtained later. Okay, let's do that. Now I think I know what to do now. Let's retrieve our game. See if we can go back to our sperm whale just before we had our issue. Inside a sperm whale, heart of gold. Inside the sperm whale, you are in the stomach of a sperm whale. You can hear a distant sound of rushing wind. There is an engineer robot here. The engineer robot looks around. Somebody call the repair service. Look at flower pot. The pot is filled with fertile soil. It is inscribed in inertia inertial guide system, Magrathian Missile Company. It must have been created by the same burst of improbability that created the whale itself. The engineer robot looks impatient and, and guns the, the throttle of his cycle. We're not going to have to worry about the, the robot this time. All right, um, uh, put flower pot in to thing. Done. Probably a kid playing around with someone else's thumb. Gumbles the engineer, engineer robot and roars off on his iron blade into the sub ether. Inventory. Ah, damn. I ran out of space. I ran, ran. I ran out of time. I uh, have to do this again. We are playing. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Interactive Fiction Text Adventure Game First released in 1984 And we're playing this on Wind Frots. Okay folks, I think we're going to take a break right here We've really made a lot of progress here we're going to get back to the heart of gold. We're going to save our game as uh, as uh, Fluff's Flower Pot. And uh, we have the date here as 3-23-2021. So we will continue on. Uh, we will continue on our adventure. We will, uh, we'll, what we'll do is we, we will, we've made it back from the from the sperm well, we survived and we obtained all our items back. We're gonna take a quick, we're gonna take a brief break for, not a brief break, we're gonna take a break until next week and we are going to continue our adventure back on the Heart of Gold, uh, growing our flower pot. I wanna divide this up into two parts because it's, it's kinda of complicated. It's a lot of uh, in intricate stuff. So we will divide this uh, adventure uh, separate the sperm whale from the uh, back on the um, heart of gold with the flower pot uh, session in growing the four fluffs on into the flower pot so we're going to divide that up and uh, that way it'll be easier to digest all this information thanks so much for tuning in i hope you had a good time i certainly had a fun time playing this game for you and i hope uh, you will join me next week same same time tuesday next adventure Tuesday and we'll continue our adventure back on the heart of gold take care of each other and we'll see you again real soon on video game as oasis playful podcast and uh yeah popping on a tour I'm going to planning to read the entire the entire uh manual from the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy to some some extra content for my podcast so let's tune in for that tomorrow take care of each other eat uh, nutritious healthy food drink fresh water a break from the computer or the pod or the podcast or the computer whatever you're doing it electronic take a break to do some physical exercise okay folks i think we're going to take a break right here we've really made a lot of progress here we're going to get back to the heart of gold we're going to save our game as uh as uh fluffs flower pot and uh we have the date here as 3-23-2021. So we will continue on. Uh, we will continue on our adventure. We will. Uh, we'll. What we'll do is we we will. We've made it back from the from the sperm well. We survived and we obtained all our items back. We're going to take a quick. We're going to take a brief break for not a brief break. We're going to 
take a break until next week and we are going to continue our adventure back in the heart of gold uh, growing our flower pot i want to divide this up into two parts because it's it's kind of complicated it's a lot of uh, in intricate stuff so we will divide this uh adventure uh separate the sperm whale from the uh, back on the um, heart of gold with the flower pot uh, session it, growing the four fluffs on into the flower pot so we're going to divide that up and uh, that way it'll be easier to digest all this information thanks so much for tuning in i hope you had a good time i certainly had a fun time playing this game for you and i hope uh, you will join me next week same same time tuesday next adventure tuesday and we'll continue our adventure back on the heart of gold take care of each other and we'll see you again real soon on video gamers oasis playful podcast and uh you're popping on up tomorrow i'm going to planning to read the entire the entire uh manual from the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy just some some extra content for my podcast so tune in for that tomorrow take care of each other eat uh, nutritious healthy food drink fresh water Take a break from the computer or the pod or the podcast or the computer, whatever you're doing, electronic. Take a break to do some physical exercise. Rest when your body craves rest, and we'll see you again refreshed and new again. See, see you again next time. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to uh, this video will be edited on Video Gamers Oasis uh, segment of it. Video Gamers Oasis on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. And my Twitter is video underscore tweets and Facebook is Video Gamers Oasis on Facebook as well as Instagram Video Gamers Oasis. Thanks so much for following me on those social media networks and we'll see you again real soon. Until next time, bye! You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Wind Frots. Hello, welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and I'm your host, Jeremy. We're back again to continue our adventure with Text Adventure Tuesday. It's March the 30th, 2021, almost near the end of the month. And I hope you're looking forward to April 2021. I certainly am. We're continuing our adventure of... <coughs> excuse me. We're continuing our adventure of uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, written by Douglas Adams, made into a text adventure game. And if, if you've been following my adventure so far, last week we, uh, Arthur had, had to, um, using the improbability generator, teleported with the T, of course, the T helped him find the sperm whale. He, he, he teleported into the stomach of the sperm whale to, in order to uh, obtain the flower pot, which was one of the missiles of Magrathia that had been transformed. And now he's trying to find a, a way to escape the sperm well. Let's find out how he does this. How, we, how does uh, Arthur escape the, the stomach of the sperm whale with the flower pot as well as all his items? Because last episode, I don't know if you noticed, I was unable to obtain all the items with, with the teleportation. So we're going to find out how to do this right after the station identification. So we're back in the heart of gold. We're doing this again. So let's, uh, we got the T, so look at spare him probability drive. All right, press switch, uh, press generator switch. Like fog rolling in off the ocean, a shard of blackness billows towards you. Unlike fog rolling in off the ocean, the blackness hits you like a 16 ton truck. Dark. Look. You can see, hear, taste, smell, nothing. You're not certain where you are. Uh, we got feel, feel. Darkness, it does feel a bit cold, wet, and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. Tips, uh, drink liquid. 
It tastes just like wine. You realize your growing embarrassment your hand is sitting in, in a glass of white wine. You're at a party being given by a distant, incredibly boring acquaintance. Ah, lethally dull woman corners you and bores you to death. Everything becomes dark. Look, smell, feel, taste, listen. Okay, listen. Nothing you taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can heal, feel. Look. Nothing you taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel. Smell. You can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. Listen. Here to just in the star of a star drive. Um, all right. Let's see if we can get back in the sperm whale. AFT, AFT, go up. All right. Inventory. We got all the fluff. Okay, let's uh, all the stuff. That's oh no tea. We don't have the tea. Look at tea. Looks like like it has even more brony emotion. Take T. No T dropped. Save the game. Magrathia. Okay, so look at spare improbability. Drive. Press switch. We need the T to get there. Which switch do we need? I mean the generator switch. Press generator switch. All right. Um, press. I should have saved where at the very beginning. Press spare improbability drive. Press switch. Which switch do you mean? The generator switch? Yes. Press generator switch. Dark. You are disoriented. Blackness swims towards you like a shoal of eels. Everything turns dark. Look. You can hear, smell, taste, feel nothing. Smell, taste, feel nothing. Look. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, or taste anything. Feel. It does feel a bit warm and wet and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. <sighs> taste liquid. You are in the stomach of a sperm whale. Yuck. You can hear a distant sound of a rushing whale, a rushing wind. Save the game as inside the sperm whale, and we'll save this as beginning. So in case we die or lose our place, we know what to do. All right, inventory. We have no T, electronic, sub ether disigling device, and number 12. Asteroid paint chipper and ultra plasmic vacuum all. Your gown looks like your gown contains a pocket fluff and towel. I think your aunt gave you what you don't know what it is a babel fish. All right. Um, there's a flower pot here. Uh, put device into in thing. Done. Put gown in thing. Done. Put towel in thing. Done. Put all in thing. Done. Put chipper in thing. Done. Put device. Okay. Inventory. You have no tea. A thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. It looks like the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, contains. Look at flower pot. The pot is filled with fertile soil. It is ascribed inertia. Guidance system, Magrathian Missile Company. It must have been created by the same burst of improbability that created the whale itself. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Save our game as 
inside the sperm whale, stashing inventory into thing. We'll save our game as stashing inventory into thing. Put put flower pot into thing. That's an easy for you to say since you don't even have the flower pot. Take flower pot. Take take it. Ah, let's return retrieve our <laughs> retrieve our item. Open. Take flower pot. Take it. Put flower pot. So I had to retrieve my my previous save for flower pot into thing. Done. Finally, splat. Everything becomes dark. Got it. Look. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing, and you're not certain where you are. Um, look. You can't hear, see, smell, feel, or taste. Listen. Hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing. Uh, smell. There's nothing you can taste, see, feel, or smell. Listen. You hear the deep distance hum of a star drive from, from, from far above this exit to port. So we'll just save this as Heart of Gold after, after inside of the sperm whale. After inside the sperm whale. Flower pot needs four pieces of fluff, so um, which we can obtain later. Now collect the four fluffs and either wait for the thing to turn up or drop the device, depending on which. All right, go back to the bridge. We're to go back to the bridge. Eft, eft, go up. Go back to the bridge. Inventory. You have no tea of evil fish in your ear. What's in the thing? Look at thing. You can't see anything here. Lying on the deck is a plot or connected to the sperm probability drive. Where, where are all my items? They're in the thing? Ah, man. What does it say here? I got all my thing. I got my t no tea and a babel fish in my ear. Everything else is in the thing. So we're back in the Heart of Gold, entry bay number two, AFT, and then go up, bridge. Now collect the four fluffs and either wait for the thing to turn up. All right, there's four, four fluffs here. Take, jacket fluff, taken. Take seat cushion fluff taken inventory. Oh, you have we got our inventory back. You have no tea, seat cushion fluff, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is. It looks like the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, contains a flower pot. Number twelve asteroid paint chipper, an ultra plasmic vacuum owl, a towel, your gown. Looks like your gown contains pocket fluff and electronic. Sub so either the signaling device and jacket fluff. All right, look, looks like we got it all. Save our game as half um, after a sperm whale.
Well, there you have it. That's all the time we have for this episode of Text Adventure Tuesday of Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. It's a relatively short episode. I wanted to divide up the adventure into uh, more uh, digestible niblets. Uh, <clears throat> so we've recovered the flower pot from the sperm whale. And in next episode, we'll continue on our adventure with Arthur on the Heart of Gold. And we're going to... Uh, we're, we're going to work with the flower pot that we've obtained and we're going to plant four fluffs that we've obtained from previous adventures into the flower pot. So I hope you'll join me for that adventure. It's kind of tedious at times, but I promise you, promise you there will be some exciting and delightfully uh, satirical moments to uh, enjoy. So, All right, we're back on the Heart of Gold and we're continuing the adventure where we left off where Arthur was putting together the four fluffs from his collection. If you recall, it was the jacket fluff, the pocket fluff, the satchel fluff, and the seat fluff for the, you know, for the, from the boat. And he's, take, he's taken the four fluffs and he put into, planted into the soil of the, the plotted plant of the uh, <clears throat> Of petunias and now he is he was able to create a, a sprout and now we're continuing on where we left off we're getting near the adventure in the end of the adventure we're getting so close the score is 225 moves 936 so we're getting close to the end we are really um, getting close I'm just type in score we're about to give you your score. Put on your pearl sensitive sunglasses now. Hit return or enter when ready. You score, your score is 225 out of a possible 200 in 936 turns. So now, now I'm, I'm referring, I'm getting a little help from the IGN Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy walkthrough. And the, um, the walkthrough says, we're on the bridge, now collect the four fluffs and either wait for the thing to turn up or drop the device depending on which method you used earlier. Now plant the four fluffs in the pot and wait until a sprout grows. Done. All right, we've done that part. Now we're back in the game and what we need to do now, now go port. So let's go, let's see if we can move forward here. Type in move. Go to port. Okay. Um, look. Okay. The, the bridge. This is the bridge at the heart of gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. There's a nice hot cup of tea here. Lying on the deck is a plotter connected to a spare and probability drive. The plotter's long, dangly bit is submerged in tea. There is a spare and probability drive here. There is a handbag here. It looks like the handbag contains a pair of tweezers. There is a nice hot cup of advanced tea substitute here. There is a circuit board here. There is a toolbox here. There is a small key here. There is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. There is a satchel here. A carton labeled Nutramat forward slash computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the shipping carton contains a strange gun. There is a sales brochure here. There is an ionic diffusion rasp here. There is a pair of hypersonic pliers here. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. There is a molecular hyperwave pincer here. So let's uh, uh, move. What do you want to put? Move to port. Use the port in a way that I don't understand. Move to entrance. Okay, it's um, north, south, can't go that way. Okay, T, so let's see here. Let's first look at, look at flower pot. The pot is filled with fertile soil, out of which has sprouted a tiny plant stalk. Excellent. 
So progress is being made with the with the plant stock and the in the flower pot. So now what we need to go now that we have that out of the way, go port uh, into the sauna. Let's see, let's see if we can find the sauna. Go to sauna. You enter the sauna. After several hours, you come out a changed man. You have with you a changed plant. Okay. Let's save our progress as, we'll save this as Heart of Gold Flower Pot, dated uh, April the 13th, 2021. We'll name this as Changed Plant. And we'll save that progress just so we have as a backup. Look, look at Flower Pot. The plot is filled with fertile soil, out of which has sprout, sprouted a large, leafy plant. Excellent. So what do we need to do now? Into the sauna, and when you come back out, eat the fruit. Where is the fruit? Uh, let's see if we can look around here. Uh, inventory. You have no tea, a flower pot, a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is. It looks like the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, contains a number 12 asteroid paint chipper, an ultraplasmic vacuum all, a towel, your gown, electric, electronic sub ether signaling device, a babel fish in your ear. Look at plant. The plant is now large and leafy. Hanging from it is a large succulent fruit. Excellent. Let's take the fruit, take fruit, done. Look at fruit. You see nothing special about the fruit. Eat the fruit, eat the fruit. The fruit has a zesty taste and you devour it greedily. Suddenly, your vision wavers and you see yourself as though from a distance, standing near Marvin who asks you for a toothbrush. Then the image vanishes like a movie when the film breaks. You find yourself still in the bridge. It seems that this plant is a rare horticultural phenomenon long thought to be extinct. The tree of foreknowledge. <laughs> that is like a parody of the Garden of Eden myth. Very funny, very funny. Okay. So let's uh, let's see what we got here now. Do 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 do. Save our progress. All right. Let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Save our progress. of four knowledge okay what's the next step eat the fruit make a note of the tool that Marvin asked for What is the tool that um, that no, no one has? He asked you. He asked me for a toothbrush. So let's save our progress here. Uh, we'll save this as Marvin. Marvin asked for a toothbrush. We'll save this as Marvin's. Quest. Save the progress. Marvin's request. Marvin asked for a toothbrush. So at least we'll know what to do next time. We meet Marvin. So we make a note of what Marvin asked for and pick it up. 
It might be in the toolbox, in which case you'll need to unlock it with the key. In this case, it's not, so we have to look. Um, go to bridge. I don't know the word bridge. Uh, AFT. Go up. Look. Okay, we're back on the bridge. So where is this? Uh, where is the toothbrush? Um, look at toothbrush. It looks like every other toothbrush you've ever, ever seen. Take toothbrush. Take it. Let's see our progress. Change plant. And we'll save it as... Toothbrush for Marvin. And we'll date this save as 4.13.21. Excellent. All right. So let's look at our inventory. You have no tea and toothbrush and the flower pot. So we have what we need. So next on the step, we need to, after we picked up the toothbrush, if it's in the thermal, if it's a thermal fusion chisel, wait until you get that in the Marvin's pantry. Take the tea. But earlier in the maze, you removed your common sense, so you now, can now take the no tea. Now go down to an EFT. So we uh, take the tea. Let's say, take the no tea. You're, not, you're talking complete nonsense. Pull yourself together. Take tea. No tea dropped. All right. So let's look at inventory. You have tea, a toothbrush, a flower pot, and a thing your aunt gave you, and all the other gadgets, and as well as the Babel fish. Save as progress. Fish from Marvin. Excellent. So we have a score, 250 and 969 moves. Let's look at our score so far. We're about to give you a score. Put on your peril sensitive sunglasses now. All right, let's just save our our uh, image here, our, pr our progress here. Okay. Your score is 250 out of a possible 400 in 969 turns. All right. So we've taken the T. Now go down the NAFT. So we need to go down. Go down, removing the long dangly bit first. Quarter forehand. AFT. Quarter after end. Look. This is one end of a short quarter, quarter that continues for along the main deck of the Heart of Gold. Doorways lead to AFT and port. In addition, a gangway leads downward. Save our progress. As Heart of Gold, toothbrush for Marvin. And then we'll move on to our next stage in just a few minutes. Could I take a quick break here? You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots.
picked up we picked we picked up the toothbrush to take the tea take tea no tea dropped now we want to drink tea drink tea or um, not drink tea yes uh, we want to take or look this is the bridge of the heart of gold take no tea don't be taken inventory you have no tea tea a toothbrush a flower pot a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is it looks like the thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is contains a number 12 asteroid paint chipper an ultra plasmic vacuum all a towel your gown an electronic sub ether signaling device a babel fish in your ear save our progress um, okay brush for marvin Now what we need to do, we need to go down the NFT. Go down, moving the long dangling bit first. We have T, quarter aft end. Open the door, we need to open the door. Door is almost speechless with admiration. Wow, simultaneous tea and no tea? My apologies, you are clearly a heavy duty philosopher. It opens respectfully. All right, so now we got that part done. If you enter Marvin's pantry, you will die, so do the thing that you were waiting for, drink the tea, then go port. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. that we've got through the door what do we need to do now go port however if you enter Marvin's pantry you will die so do the thing you've been waiting for drink the tea now go port so we need to drink the tea first drink the tea it is the finest tea you have ever tasted it has almost m made this entire misadventure seem worthwhile. You experience several moments of complete happiness and relaxation. The cup itself vaporizes, part of the galactic anti-litter program. See that progress there. Drink the tea. Now what we need to do, now go port. We made so much progress, we can't, we're not, can't go back now. We can't quit now either. Go port. Marvin's Pantry. This is a small closet with an ant exit to starboard. Marvin, the paranoid android, is here. There is a thermal fusion chisel here. Let's save our progress as toothbrush for Marvin. Save our graphic here. And I forgot to mention Go Port. Upon entering the room, you are battered by tidal waves of depression. However, the happiness derived from your high score and that thoroughly excellent cup of tea you had recently helped you to survive. Let's look up our score. 
Yes, I'm going to look at the score. Your score is 375 out of a possible 410, 1,017 turns. Excellent. So, what are we going to do with the uh, situation with Paranoid Android Marvin's pantry? And he's already there. Get the chisel and ask Marvin to repair the hatch. So, let's get the chisel. Take chisel. Taken. Now we need to ask Marvin to repair the hatch. Ask Marvin to repair hatch. Ask Marvin to repair hatch. Humans are so depressingly demanding. Do this. Pick up that. Unjam the opening mechanism of the other. Meet me in the hatchway access space in 12 turns, I suppose. Count up to 12. So hard to know with morons. And don't forget to bring the proper tool. Let's see our progress here. You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, interactive fiction, text adventure game, first released in 1984, and we're playing this on Winfrots. starboard access space this tiny area with an exit to port is for working on the hatch on the hatch mechanism which is vastly more complicated than your ra your rather ordinary intelligence can comprehend the floor is an open mesh metal mesh like the floor of a catwalk Marvin the paranoid Android is here Marvin looked bored uh, he says uh, hand me a toothbrush excellent Whew, I was getting a little worried there Save our progress. And me a toothbrush. Okay. Give the tool when he asks. Alright. Give Marvin the toothbrush. Give Marvin the toothbrush. Marvin fiddles inside the mechanism with the toothbrush for about three tenths of a second. You hear the hatchway slide open. I don't expect you to be grateful, says Marvin, or even interested, but that was probably more complicated than every single action you'll ever perform in your entire life put together. He limps away, and me. You hear him mutter as he goes. With this terrible pain in all the diodes down my left side. What a useful but very depressed android. Alright. I just added that myself. That's not actually in the game. I just that's just a commentary. He's very useful though. Alright, give Marvin the toothbrush is the name of the graphic that we saved. Port then down. Go port. Hatchway. There is a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is here. It looks like the thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is contains the ultra plastic vacuum all on its own. And then we want to go down. Go down. Go down. 
You are listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. And this is Text Adventure Tuesdays. We are playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Interactive fiction. Text adventure game. First released in 1984. And we're playing this on Winfrots. Go down. You step onto the landing ramp leading toward the surface of the legendary lost planet of Magrathia. Announcement! Announcement! This is Eddie, the shipboard computer. Someone is leaving the ship on a strange planet without wrapping up all nice and warm. It'll all end in tears. I just know it. The voice fades behind you. Ramp. The wind moans. Dust drifts across the surface of the alien world. Zaphod, Ford, and Trillian appear and urge you forward. Slowly, nervously, you step downwards, the cold, thin air rasping in your lungs. You set one single foot on the ancient dust. And almost instantly, the most incredible adventure starts, which you'll have to buy the next game to find out about. Your score is 400 of a possible 400 in 1,032 turns. By the way, there was a causal relationship between your taking the toothbrush and the tea collapsing, oh pardon me, and the tree collapsing at the very beginning of the, of the game. We apologize for this slight inaccuracy hit any key to exit. Video Gamers Oasis Website YouTube Channel